podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Hi, this is Leo Laporte, and this is my Tech Guy podcast. This show originally aired on the Premier Network's 200 stations all over the country on Saturday, April 18th, 2020. This is episode 1687. Enjoy. The Tech Guy podcast comes to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can ensure they are by making access and authentication seamless, whether they're working in the office or remote. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This episode of the Tech Guy is brought to you by LastPass. From access to authentication to passwords, LastPass manages every entry point to your business so you can mitigate risk while improving employee productivity. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to find out how they can help you. And by ExpressVPN. Now that a lot of you are working from home, it's even more important to choose a VPN you trust to protect you from online threats. For three extra months free with a one-year package, go to expressvpn.com slash techguy. Well, hey, 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 how are you today? Leo Laporte here, the tech guy. Time to talk computers, the internet, home theater, digital photography, smartphones, smart watches, 88, 88... Ask Leo. That's my uh, phone number. If you wanna, if you wanna talk, let's talk tech. Eight 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 two seven five five three six. Toll free from anywhere in the U.S. or Canada outside that area. Skype out. It's your friend. Skype out. will uh, let you get through. Eight 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 eight. Ask Leo. Our website. We have one. Yes, of course. It'd be silly. It'd be the tech guy. I wouldn't have a website. That'd be silly. It's techguylabs.com. You know what else would be silly? If I made you sign up or pay a fee to use it, that'd be really silly. So it's free. It's wide open. It's like the web used to be before you had to pay for every darn thing. And, uh, our fine sponsors make that possible. Thank you, fine sponsors. Techguylabs.com. And the reason I mention that, is, well, besides, you know, that's our website, is I think it might be useful to you. Because uh, you can go there if you hear something on the show. You don't have to write it down. We put it. James DeRuvo, my scribe, is here. He's writing everything down as we speak, and that makes it a lot easier. Because uh, you just listen. You just, you just, as the uh, airline pilots say, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. That's all you have to do. 8888-ASK-LEO, that's the phone number, 888-827-5536. Um, what should we talk about today? I made masks on the weekend, over my weekend is Thursday, Friday. I made masks. <laughs> Talk to your mom in our chat room. <laughs> Talked me into getting a sewing machine from her sister. Plugged to Sewing Arts Santa Monica. I got a nice little, uh, this was Dr. Mom's uh, suggestion, uh, inexpensive. It's called the Burnett B35. Inexpensive, about 200, what, 50 bucks, something like that. Sewing machine. And, uh, oh, I've been having fun. I never sewed in my life, but the sounds of sewing are in my brain. Because my mother, from way back when, uh, my whole life was sewing. And so there's a certain rhythm and a sound, that I just really know. So it's kind of fun because it kind of came back to me. The other reason I did it is because mom, who's uh, all alone back in Rhode Island, you know, she's in quarantine as much as anybody. And of course, since she's of a certain age, as they say, she, it's very important that she stay in quarantine. So she's, you know, a little lonely. So I, I kind of got the sewing machine because I thought, you know what we could do is... I could uh, I could FaceTime mom. She's got an iPhone and an iPad, so she likes to FaceTime. I could FaceTime mom, and uh, she could teach me how to sew. And you know what? That's worked out really great. <laughs> She's so excited <laughs> that her son, <laughs> late in life, has come <laughs> to sewing. But I made a nice little mask. Boy, you go on YouTube, and of course my kids have told me this. Everybody's told me this. You can learn anything on YouTube. It's really cool. You go on YouTube and you can learn how to do all kinds of uh, anything. Fix your car, play a guitar, 
sew a mask. It's all up there. So I found a mask I liked the looks of. It looked like it was easy. It is easy. It's a good thing. It's a good first sewing project because you can you can hide all your flaws. <laughs> You'll never see uh, all the ugliness on the inside because it turns inside out after you, after you sew it. And uh, you only see the outside. So it looks prettier than it is. That's fun. We have to wear uh, masks uh, all the time outside of the house now in California. I think it's true in New York and other places. Soon, Coming soon to a theater near you. Wear masks at all times. So the, the demand for masks is high. Everybody in my family now wants my colorful... Patterned masks. Isn't that... <laughs> what do we do in... Uh, what would we do without the internet? I say that all the time. What would we do without the internet? We'd be, uh, we'd be all alone. Do you remember the million-dollar homepage? This was a silly idea. A guy put himself, himself through... A, was it graduate school? I think it was. By selling uh, pixels on a web page. It was a, a megapixel web page, which these days isn't that much. Right, I don't know what a thousand by a thousand pixels is nothing. So a million dots on the page. He says it's going to be a buck a dot. If he sells out, it's a million dollars. He did. Now people wouldn't just buy one dot; they'd buy twenty, buy thirty, or whatever. His little billboards, and there's you could still still see it. It's still online. The million dollar homepage. It doesn't link to anything. <laughs> the guy who made it, I think, is just uh, he's just. You know, I don't know. Maybe he got through college. I don't know. We don't. I'd love love to keep up with him. <laughs> MillionDollarHomePage.com, and uh, which you can go see, and it's hysterical because it, for a few reasons. One, it's a it right at the top. It says own a piece of internet history, and it is now. It is now, and a lot of the things advertised on there are long gone. <laughs> uh, it's pretty strange to see. If you go there, the million dollar homepage, it's a bit of our internet history. And I'm glad he left it up. Although I'd kind of like to know, you know, none of the links on it work. I'd kind of like to know how he's doing. He made a million dollars. That's pr kind of brilliant, right? Made a, made a million. Um, so there's a guy who says, I'm going to do that. It, this, I think this comes around periodically. So he's there's a new million dollar homepage. Yeah. Uh, only this time it's in 3D because <laughs> it's 2020. It's the Million Dollar Metropolis, milliondollarmetropolis.com. Not selling quite as well. <laughs> you can go see it. doesn't cost anything to go see it. Um, he's using WebGL, more modern technology than the uh, static web page of the Million Dollar homepage. We've come a long way in a few years. <laughs> Uh, and it's got, oh, it's pretty. It's got rotating signs on it and stuff. And you click on the sign, you can find out more. And he's, uh, he's, there's 500 billion buildings, each building, you know, you can zoom in, you can zoom out. Each building has, uh, moving signs on it. It's not really selling that well. Not, he sold a few, sold a few. Let me see how much it costs. So you choose your building. The uh, it's a hundred dollars a spot for minimum ad height. You, as you get bigger, it gets this, the ad heights. You know, get more obvious. You can choose a lot of uh, different stuff. It's not that expensive. It's kind of reasonable. Still not selling because the next job is to get everybody to go to the million dollar homepage. Or what's the point? And the reason that's not taken off is because, well, it's been done. So. The you know news organizations aren't picking it up. Faux pas in the chat room says he should have called it the two million dollar sequel. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Traffic is is soaring on YouTube. You know, people not just looking for mask videos, but all kinds of stuff. Just even plain old entertainment. But advertising rates are plummeting. YouTubers say they're not getting paid nearly as much, even though more people are watching than ever before. YouTube traffic, according to the New York Times, up by 15%. YouTube pay is down by as much as 50% because nobody's buying advertising. If you think about it, uh, I would, you know, I don't know. I, first of all, it does not pay to think about it. 
<laughs> it's a mystery. Advertising is a great mystery. Thank goodness we have fine salespeople who understand it here at the Tech Guy Radio Show. You Bless you all, because uh, they keep the show afloat. But uh, and I don't know what their experience is these days in terms of uh, advertising. But some some things people are just not doing. They're not they're not buying airplane tickets. They're not renting cars. Well, maybe they are, but you know, not to the degree that they used to. So that's hurting, I guess. On the other hand, there's no sporting events, right? <laughs> so where's Budweiser going to buy its ads? I think they should buy their ads on the radio and on the podcast and on YouTube, right? But nah, that's what I think. Doesn't mean that's what they're going to do. So uh, I don't know. I, I mean, I don't feel sorry for the YouTubers. Do you? Probably not, but but pity the poor YouTubers. They're still cranking out the videos. Actually, on I think they deserve. They're not heroes. Okay, they're not heroes. That I reserve that for the doctors and nurses on the front lines. Those are the heroes risking their lives, and you know the grocery store stockers and the delivery guys and all that stuff. They're they're, they're putting their lives on the line. YouTubers really aren't, but they're heroes in the sense they're providing us with entertainment. Goodness knows we need it. You know, I don't want to be the bearer of bad tidings. We're going to talk to Scott Wilkinson at the bottom of the hour, but I don't want to be the bearer of bad tidings. But we're watching a lot of TV now, right? There's a lot of stuff to watch. There's Tiger King and there's movies. And in fact, the movie companies are even putting their movies online for a rental. 20 bucks a pop, but hey, that's cheaper than a movie ticket. I guess that's their rationale. Doesn't, doesn't really excuse it. Maybe the movie ticket's a little expensive. Anyway, um, we're watching a ton of TV now, right? Netflix, streaming, all that stuff. But I don't, and I don't want to rain anybody's parade. But nobody's making new stuff right now. They're all shut down. You know, you got people like uh, Jim Jim Halpert from The Office, John Krasinski, the actor. He was Jim. He's Jack Ryan on uh, Amazon Prime. He's not working. Nobody's working. I feel bad that the, the the he's doing something. He's making a YouTube channel, SGN, some good news, and it's actually awesome. Makes a weekly show that makes Jimmy Kimmel and and uh, Jimmy Fallon look pathetic. I mean, he's just he must have a team of a hundred people putting effort into this. He's not doing it for the money. He's I don't know what he's doing it for. It's good for him. It's good for us. It saves the world. It gives us entertainment. If you haven't seen it, SGN. He's got a, in one week he has more than a million. I think a, two million subscribers now. Every video viewed seven or eight million times. It's pretty impressive. Instant YouTube star. But he's not making movies. So here's the here's the, the bad news. In six months or a year, there's not going to be anything. To, we're going to watch, have watched everything. There won't be anything new. <laughs> They're not making anything right now. And they won't make anything, I don't know, for how long. How long before the movie industry starts up? So enjoy your content now. Maybe ration it a little bit. Pretend you're in the desert and you got one canteen of water and only drink a little bit at a time. Don't start watching five hours a night. We're going to run out. We got a movie and TV show shortage. I want to raise the clarion call. Nobody's making nothing. Well, I guess there's some of the people who are doing it at home. What do you think of that, by the way? You know, you see, see the Ellen show producing at home. You see the nightly news. The uh, the anchors are at home. You can see their houses, which is kind of fun. There's a Twitter feed <laughs> reviewing people's Skype backgrounds <laughs> or Zoom backgrounds on TV. It's pretty funny. Uh, I don't remember. The, I'll, I'll find it and I'll, I'll tell you. I'll put it in the show notes. Uh, 8888 Ask Leah, what are you doing to stay entertained? Maybe watch a little less TV. you got to save some for later. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hey, Kimmy, don't take no. Hello. Hello. <laughs> What's happening? Hello, Kimmy, don't take no. <laughs> Our phone angel, Kimmy Schmidt. Hello. I mean, Kimmy Schaffer. Kimmy, don't take no. Schaffer. That's really the right way to do it. Did you see my mask? I did see your mask. What do you Congratulations. Think? I was watching your progress. I think you did a great job. I've made four now, and I've run out of supplies. Not yeah, fabric. That's the problem. Got plenty of fabric. It's the elastic. Um, 
Yeah. Well, and what I found out is I can cut off the bottoms of T-shirts. Okay. One thing I got a lot of is gimme T-shirts. You know, companies always send oh, you T-shirts. I know. Being in radio, I've yep. got loads of uh, I wish I had. I, I gave a bunch to Goodwill. I wish I'd saved those because yeah. you can cut the bottom off uh, and that makes a nice little springy kind of strap. And then, um, so that's fine. And then the one thing I need is, and I'm ordering them, I've ordered them, is, uh, so I use the, um, what do you call them? You know, in the, on the, when you buy coffee, they got those little plat, those little, uh, wraps that t you, you fold it down and then you, oh, uh, it's like a tie. T twist tie. It's like of, a twist tie, yeah. but it's better. Yeah. It's, oh, uh, is that for the nose part? They're for the nose bridge. Okay. And I so I found those. You can order them on Amazon. I didn't know this. Peel and stick twist ties. So they're not twist ties, though. They're better. They're stronger. Right, they're they're the thicker. stronger ones. So I ordered those. I got plenty of vacuum cleaner bags for the filter. I'm using the right. Now, you got to be careful because some of them have uh, fiberglass. No, but Ooh. these don't. No, no. These are that good. good. Yeah, you wouldn't want to breathe fiberglass. That's bad for you. So they're little cute little, uh, mostly I just like the patterns and I don't, you know what, the big, big. I've seen some pretty creative ones. Yeah. You can get all kinds of, uh, it's fun. fabric, so. It's fun. Yeah. So, um, anyway, that's just what I've been doing. I, I, I gave up on sourdough. I've had enough sourdough to last a lifetime. I love sourdough. I just don't want to eat it. <laughs> well, that's the problem. You, my gosh, I see your, uh, your posts on Instagram. Are you walking like 10 miles Every yeah. day? Is that what you're doing? <clears throat> so, uh, Tuesday was my birthday, so I went on a 10-mile hike, and uh, almost 11-mile hike, because I figured moly. I'd be eating well. <laughs> Holy night. moly. Yeah, so I've got one one walking partner who I meet two or three times a week, and because we're not doing anything else anywhere else, so um, we meet, we do that. and Really uh, nice. That's yeah, because I, I can't walk that long on my own, because it's too boring. Right. I, I get bored with my own thoughts. Right. <laughs> so I... And happy birthday, by Thank the way. You. Yeah, you had a, a lonesome birthday, too. It wasn't bad. It was actually pretty darn good, all things considered. I, I would say I've had more boring birthdays in the past being at work. So, yeah, I went on a long walk, had champagne with the neighbors, picked up margaritas What do you do? You, so you put, like, a glass of champagne six feet away from you, and you go backwards, and then they come up, and they... <laughs> is that how you do it? Like yeah, you have well, a, they brought their own glasses. Oh yeah, they wave at you across the uh, yeah, 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 across it the was, way. It was nice. pretty, and then then I had a couple of um, WhatsApp, 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 WhatsApp chats. That's um, nice. Yeah, so it was it for Fun. for this weird thing that we're going through right it now. Is weird, it was, it was a pretty pretty good pretty, yeah pretty good day. Well, it's uh, wonderful to see you and it's talk to you to from a distance. Yeah. Kimmy is far far away. She's two. There's two doors separating us. Yes, there is. Yeah, and I'm in my, oh. my sealed studio. <laughs> we'll take calls in a minute. I, you know, I knew we were going to run out of time. I just wanted to catch up. Uh, know, Scott Wilkinson, he's coming up too. We'll talk to him, and then we'll take your calls. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. <laughs> what is hip? I'll tell you. Scott Wilkinson. <laughs> he's the hip guy, man. He's the home theater geek, contributor at techhive.com, and our resident Home theater guru. Did you hear what I said at the beginning of the hour? Ration uh, your content because they're not making new stuff. Well, that's mostly true. Uh, they aren't. However, I found a couple of examples that are that they're actually starting to do remote production. Uh, for example, the ABC, uh, the CBS series All Rise. Of yeah. Court courtroom drama. Yeah. Uh, on May fourth, they're going to have an episode recorded entirely. With Zoom and WebEx and this does not wear well. No, probably you remember, not. You may remember Modern Family did a whole episode that way, and it's fine I, for a one-off. Mm, yes. Now, are they going to continue to do it? Um, American Idol is going to have their contestants. I was wondering how they're going to do that. That's what they're going to do. Starting April twenty-six, they're going to have everybody remotely, and the judges are going to be in their homes. Now this brings up the question of how good is the equipment at the at the contestants' homes, you know, because that's going to affect how they sound. Well, I'm going to hope, I'm going to pray. There are plenty <laughs> of experts out there, including our good friend Alex Lindsay, who has a company, 090.media, that they come to your house and they set it all up. Now, admittedly, you don't want people in your house, so maybe you that's go. That's the problem. Go to the pool house. 
or your stables. <laughs> <laughs> go out where the Porsches are, you know, right, somewhere. Right. Let the people come in, set it all up. Yep. Then I guess they have to kind of clean as they leave. And then, what do you wait, 72 hours? I don't know. Yeah, it seems like yeah. they could, it'd be possible to do this uh, without, you know, any, I don't know. I would think so. I would think so. Anyway, or just, you know what I Oprah used to do when, when you came on Oprah with Skype, because she was very early on years ago, started using, yeah, using She had a kit. She'd send you, she would mail, by the U.S. mail, this big Pelican box. Those are those hard mm -hmm. cases that the pros yeah, use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Inside, foam, packed in foam, was a camera. And this, they even would send out microphone. a laptop, it, microphones, oh, wow, everything. Wow, okay. Pre-configured. I mean, uh, I I would guess you know even uh, uh, even Tom Cruise could set this up. I mean, it's not that hard. You take it out, you plug it in. <laughs> even Tom, Cruise. even Tom Cruise <laughs> could set. I don't know. I was I can't think of anybody, but uh, you know what yeah, I'm yeah, saying yeah. No, is. No. Yeah, I get you. I get yeah. you. I feel like so they, we, there's we ways to do this. Seeing, we, may, we may start seeing more of this, you know, and a lot. So many people are becoming aware now of things like lighting. And I see so many of I, I went, attended a webinar a couple of days ago from DEG, the uh, digital entertainment group, um, about, you know, the challenges of, of the pandemic on uh, enter entertainment distribution. And a number of people were, were had their cameras on them with bright windows behind them. And I'm going, no, don't do that. Turn around, face the window, use the window light on your face. Uh, and some people are, are getting that. So we're, well, we're we coming have made uh, at Twit my podcast network because we're a bunch of geeks and we've been doing this for years, right? Sure. You're doing it right now. I am. And well, you look I've, great. I've, I've got some studio lights. And yeah, you know how to do it. You got a fancy professional microphone. You've got a converter. You got a lot of gear, uh, which we sent you and you set up. You're even yep. smarter than Tom Cruise. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, you set it all up. It wasn't that hard. And uh, uh, so we were kind of we kind of have been doing this. Since the beginning, I couldn't. Yeah. I wouldn't have the podcast network except for the fact that all of our hosts, we can use Skype, and all of our hosts who are spread out all over the world can Skype mm -hmm. in, and it works great. The sound yeah. is great. Uh, the video even is uh, is very good if you if you set it up right. Yeah. So we've made videos uh, on our social media, also youtubecom slash twit on how to do this. And uh, I'm, 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 you know, I'm gonna, we're, we're trying to help people do this because I, I watch. Sometimes I watch, I watch the news, and there's people. I know. It's I terrible. Know. I know. And it's like well, all well, the weather is... people in their homes. Although I do agree with you, seeing people's homes is That's very fun. interesting. <laughs> that is fun. Yep. Yeah, but uh, one of our weather guys does it from outdoors. He does it in front of his hedge in his front yard. Yeah. We're so going to tire of this. Or maybe not. Maybe this is the new aesthetic for broadcasting yeah. is the kind Indeed. of homemade thing. Certainly Indeed. YouTube and podcasts have I've made been doing this, it for years. Yeah, have made yeah. this popular and the kids love it. Anybody under 25, they're not used to like they don't even like the fancy studio setting. They right, want right, it to right. be somebody's house. Right. Right. So, the more raw, the more sort of yeah. do it yourself kind of yeah. kind of aesthetic, right? Well, uh, I wanted to quickly follow up from from last week. We were talking about low cost TVs. Yeah, and of course, TVs don't have very good sound. So I wanted to make a few recommendations for sound bars, inexpensive sound bars. Ah, because you 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 can improve the sound quality of your TV dramatically by just spending a little bit on a sound bar. And I kept it under two hundred bucks. OK, I, I wanted to look at sound bars that, that were pretty affordable. You can get sound bars that are 2.0. That means just two channels with no subwoofer. Um, I really like having a subwoofer if you can spring for it, uh, because it really does add a lot when you when you have good bass. Now, Vizio is my favorite company for low cost sound bars by far. And they have uh, and they've I'm not the only one. Uh, Digital Trends and CNET also find them very good. In particular, the SB3621. So it's, that means it's 36 inches wide and it's a 2.1 soundbar. Um, and it's on sale for 145 bucks. Um, you know, so under 200 bucks. They they yeah, they have one from 2015, the 4221, which is 42 inches wide 2.1 for 80 bucks 
with a with a wireless sound bar, a uh, wireless subwoofer. So that's a few years old, and they're probably trying to get rid of old stock. But you know, hey, the, it it should sound pretty darn good. Uh, CNET also really liked um, one called the Creative Stage from uh, the company Creative. It's mostly about games. Uh, but this is 137 bucks. It's only 21 inches wide, so it doesn't give you good stereo separation. But it does have a, a wireless subwoofer. They call they CNET says it's good as a computer speaker. Now here's an idea: if you buy a TV, there, it's going to have apps, right? Streaming apps. But if it's not a Roku TV, you can get a Roku smart sound bar that has 4K video streaming built in. Now this is pretty darn cool. I think uh, so. If you, the Roku if you were to get a, is a soundbar with a Roku built in. Correct. That's kind of cool because you just plug in the soundbar via the HDMI port, and you don't have to worry correct. about sound or anything. It's just done. It's done. Is and Roku make you, this? That's brilliant. Yeah, yeah. That's I brilliant. This was brilliant. Well one hundred sixty bucks at Best Buy. That's a good choice. A Roku alone might cost you around a hundred. Hundred so bucks for four K. For four K. Yeah. So a little more money. You get the right. Roku. it's a Roku Ultra built into a soundbar. Correct. Love it. Correct. Thirty two nice. inches. It's two point oh. It doesn't have a wire. You can buy an, a wireless sub for an extra hundred and seventy nine bucks. So that becomes not as as inexpensive. Yeah, but, but start, you don't need that. Start with start a, with the two point oh. Yeah. You know. Start with the stereo and, and add a subwoofer when you when you get when you get some dough. So. You stay. In, you was you staying well. You staying healthy. At, you, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Scott's always worked out of the house. So us, we we geeks. I know it's <laughs> this it's is almost nothing. No change for me at all. I've done this for thirty years. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why we're very healthy. That's Scott right. Wilkinson, read his work at TechHive.com. I got the little headphone amp, the DAC, the hip flask. That oh, you the Hi-Fi hip DAC. Oh, cool. The hip DAC is awesome. It I sounds love so it. Good. They were back ordered, but I ordered it anyway, and they sent it, and I'm I'm so happy. Oh, Techhive.com, home theater geek Scott Wilkinson. Thank you, Scott. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Yeah, this is a uh, this is a great website. It's called Rate My Skype Room uh, at on Twitter, and he goes through and he rates people. Now there's uh, there's uh, Ellen. She's doing her show from home, well lit. I'm sure the sound is good, although I don't see a lav on her. So, you know, probably she can't possibly maybe, uh, maybe a shotgun mic or something. Maybe Anne Hayes is running the the uh, boom. I don't know. Yeah, she's but got again, her phone she's next got her, to her window behind her, so, and that's yeah, but that's she, it's okay because she's lit though. See so, yeah, how she's lit? She's lit. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love Jane Lynch. She's apparently in her closet. <laughs> but she's but see, she paid attention to audio. She got good headphones and a Rode mic. And that makes a big difference, the high-quality yeah, audio. Absolutely. No question. Let's see who else here. Oops. Clicked a link. Oh. Didn't mean to click a link. Uh, click that link. Uh, this is... Uh, that looks kind of cartoony. Yeah. The color's wild. Bob Passani. Uh, he, he gets a 9 out of 10. Uh-huh. <laughs> this is Samantha B. <laughs> she first she's doing it from her living room finally she went outside yeah 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 natural light is good you yeah know? yeah friend. if you can set it up outside then you're golden you know if you've got a deck or something where you could have the camera pointing through you know pointing out the door or something mm -hmm. uh, or or like i say put put the window face the window if you got a big window we did this with with our online zoom seder a couple of weeks ago <laughs> Uh, my wife and I, you know, sang a couple songs at the Seder, right. and we set it up so that our big picture window in the front room was lighting us, and and that was our lighting. <laughs> They've ranked this one down because uh -oh. apparently she sorted her books not by title or subject matter, but by color. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. okay. Uh, you know, I like that. That's a nice Skype room. Like that. Up to, must be his. His cabin, Michael Beschloss. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, do you want to stick around for the uh, top of the oh, yeah. hour? All right. Sure. Um, I g you got a couple minutes if you want to talk to the peoples now. Well, how you doing, everybody? I hope everyone's staying safe. That's the most important part. Uh, Mike2771 says, Audio Engine A5 Plus with a sub sounds incredible. Oh, I, I bet love the does. A5. I'm a very happy boy. I love my A5s. You got, you, you got the A5s? Do you have a sub with it? Uh, you bet. You yeah. bet. 
That and probably then, sounds And then fantastic. even my computer, uh, my computer speakers in my office are, a, are the, the smaller A5s or the sub. And yeah, it's a very good choice, I think. Of course, how much are they? Oh, I don't even know. They're a lot. <laughs> they're not cheap, lot, but they're but they're nice. A lot more than a couple hundred bucks, but they're nice. Uh, I don't know if they're a lot more than a couple hundred bucks. They're, they're oh, well, maybe they're okay. Yeah, they're pr they're pretty good. They make the best computer speakers. They're small little bookshelf speakers, and uh -huh. then you can get the bigger ones, which I used for years on my TV until you yeah. talked me out of stereo. <laughs> you really need surround sound when yeah. you're watching a TV or a movie or something Blue like that. Blue MM says the A5s are four hundred bucks a piece, but those are bigger. For, well, yeah. A5 I have A3s. Plus. I think they're A3s for my uh, my uh, computer, the little ones. Uh, Lou MM says he got the uh, yeah. Samsung HWN950 soundbar, which uh, has Harman Kardon technology. That's true, because Samsung bought Harman Kardon with Dolby Atmos, wireless and exceptional. It's not cheap, though. Yeah, well, let's uh, see. That's exactly right. Mm, matzo ball soup. Uh, uh, Ooh, matzo ball soup. Mm -hmm. I had mm. some great matzo ball soup from Gelson's at Passover. Oh, it was I, great. That's my favorite part of Passover. That and the matzos. Yeah, yeah. I like matzos in any form. <laughs> mm. And you, I don't know. Maybe I'm I'm strange. Well, I know I am. But um, matzo the the Hillel sandwich, matzo bread with a uh, horseradish. And Herosis. Oh, that's interesting. Delicious. You get your bit of herbs and your matzahs. Exactly, exactly. You <laughs> all right. your sinuses all at the same time. H hang on. Uh, uh, we'll get to you in a sec. Top you of bet. the hour. Thank you, Scott. <laughs> Leo Laporte, the tech guy, 8888. Ask Leo the phone number. Now, finally, after all this time, we get to the phones. Line one, Johnny in Atlanta, Georgia. Hi, Johnny. Leo Laporte. Hey, Leo, always good to talk to you. Thanks for calling. Hey, uh, just wanted uh, to uh, uh, accept your apology. I apologize. I, f I vigorously and deeply, humiliatingly apologize. What did I do wrong? Well, you apologized on the radio last week, and I felt like you were talking directly to me <laughs> because I was one of those that bought the Alcams earlier. Oh, uh, yeah, I do apologize <laughs> for that. Aren't they great? But Weren't I, they great? Well, I think, and I think I'm okay for a while. I know we don't have the cloud anymore, but I do have Wi-Fi in my truck where I have the oh. uh, thing. So, I, you know, so I, it'll still be of use to me. So, so people, so, so they know these were a really great dash cam. It was a startup. Uh, people from Apple came and made these beautiful cameras. You put it in your uh, window of your car. It had two uh, views, forward and backward. And the idea was if there was an accident, you'd have a recording, both of what you were doing and what the bad, you know, the guy you hit was doing. Um, it, if it would automatically trigger, and this is where the cloud was useful, it would upload to the cloud. Um, but it did require, uh, and it had its own LTE built in. Now, because their servers are down, are gone, the company seems to have gone out of business. We're not sure. It's bizarre. I think somebody bought their assets, and we're waiting to see what happens. Uh, but so you have Wi-Fi in your car. What what happens? Does the does the video stream somewhere? Well, you know, you, I think if you st you can still do your clips, right? You know, you can, say, can okay, you? So. Yeah, as far as I'm, as far as I, I because it's going to us, it's going to their server, isn't it? Yeah, I got, I got to recheck it. Okay, but yeah, you know, do it I and see what happens. Because, yeah. you know, uh, I could put Wi-Fi in my car. I mean, I, you know, I just turn your phone into a hotspot or something. Right. So I got to play with it more. But I noticed last week on the caller you were talking to, it's like. Well, it's not any good once you pull out of your driveway, right? It's like because he had Wi-Fi, but that was that was like so he could check his car, see what's going right. on, because uh, yeah. it had a live feed. But I don't know if it does it still record. I wonder without. Oh, well, I'm gonna have to play with that and get back to you. Yeah, let me know if it records. But I do apologize because it was expensive. It really was great for the couple of years it worked. Yeah, it, I like. Know, if, it. if you go to their website, owlcam.com, it says their assets were re recently acquired by Zergo X I R G O Technologies, which sounds like something from a Buck Rogers movie, a leading provider of industrial IoT technologies to uh oh fleets and enterprise mm -hmm. partners. Yeah. So that sounds, you know, that sounds like it might continue on as uh, something the you know UPS would buy for all their trucks. But whether there'll be a consumer-facing version, I don't know. Yeah, it's well, too bad. I, anyway, it's too hey, bad. I, I don't. I don't. Re I don't regret it. I don't really regret it. Yeah. So, I'm sorry. Uh, but anyway, what I'm calling is, I'm hoping you give me some good advice that I'm trying to give to my church going uh, now, today, and going forward for you know broadcast and stuff like that. And one of them is, 
uh, as they get ready, as we get ready to come back, you know, when, when a lot of these uh, restrictions are lifted, uh, you know, they really want to start doing some live streaming in the church, which they've never done before. Right. Okay, so they went ahead. So are they, and, so they're not doing anything now, they're just, everybody's home. Well, they're recording the sermons. They're okay, and then putting it out, but they're not doing it live. I mean, you could start yeah, they, live now would be, you know. Well, right, but everybody's kind of at their home, and, you know, you got different staff members that do different parts of the service. So they're doing that, and then one of the other staff members is putting it all together, and okay. they're broadcasting it live, you know. On that's Facebook fine. At 11 o'clock. Yeah, it's that's fine, fine. Yeah. sure. Uh, okay, but, you know, going forward, when they get back into the church, you know they're 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 trying to plan and you know so I'm kind of involved with a little bit of that. Now they bought they purchased a Mevo Plus. Okay, they did, they purchased a Mevo. That's a Plus. really cool device. I have one of those. Okay, but but here's what they're 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 talk, when I'm talking to them that they're going to want to do later. They're talking about it. They like that Mevo Plus. They want to get other Mevo Pluses. No, the you can't. Is, it doesn't work right, that way. Right. Yeah, because I noticed on the uh, the ATEM switch that you were you know you've been touting. Uh, the uh, am I saying that correct? Yeah, ATEM. They they they, I mean, they say it out. Right. This is a black magic design device. In fact, this is how I would recommend a church do it. Uh, the uh, the Mevo. The whole idea of the Mevo is it's one camera, 4K, that you can it virtually pan and zoom and move around because it's such a high resolution camera. It's like four 1080p videos. So anything within its wide angle, you can zoom in on four times you can move around you can actually it has a follow feature and it's designed to stream to facebook and a variety of other streaming sites the you know the, the couple of issues uh you can't do two of them as far as i know unless you have two streams and and it's you know i mean i think what you what he should look at three hundred dollars for the atem uh, mini which is a little hardware switcher has four inputs then you need right. four cameras that can output clean HDMI to that. That could be a video camera. That could be a still camera. You have to get the right ones, but a lot of still cameras have little mini HDMI plugs. You plug into that, plug it into the ATEM, and it's a, it's, it's a camera. You want two things. You want uh, unlimited runtime. So some of these will time out after 30 minutes to protect, they say, to protect their sensors. I think it's to protect their tax status because video cameras are taxed differently in Europe than still cameras, but whatever. You want to make sure they have continuous runtime and they have clean HDMI out, live clean HDMI out of the camera. That can go in the ATEM. But, you know, parishioners probably have a lot of different point and shoots will work with that. Uh, a lot of inexpensive ones will work with that. In fact, if you go to Elgato's uh, website, they have a list of... They have, they have a little converter that takes HDMI, turns it into USB. They have a list of cameras that will work with that. That would also work with the ATEM. So you need four you cameras, need and then you need a switcher, and then you need audio, and you're done. And now you have a studio. You have a four-camera setup. You can switch. Can you spell the Elgato, you said? E-L-G-A-T-O. I'll put a link in the show notes to the uh, Elgato page. One of the reasons I'm, I'm, I'm up on all this is I'm working on a uh, Ask the Tech Guy segment where we describe this whole setup. I'll, that'll come out in the next few weeks. So, I because I want to show you how you would do this, whether it's for a church or anybody who wants to do like a mini television production. Um, okay, yeah, that would that would be great. That would you be could great have, a lot of people. You could even with that, you could have uh, hymn lyrics scrolling up. I mean, there's a lot of things you can do with that. And I right. think it'd be, for church production, 300 bucks for the switcher and then you know, four camcorders, 500 bucks each, something like that. For well under uh, $5,000, you can set up. You know, you might want to get some lights. You definitely want to look at audio. Um, right. Uh, and, and can I ask, I'm sorry, can I ask you one more question? Sure. Before we run out of time as well. All right. Currently, what the church is doing, the, the, the lead pastor is doing, he is doing a Facebook Live every night. I think that's great. That's, this uh, is going to, this, this will continue up. after quarantine because it's so right. great. What a great uh, way to serve. Right. He's doing a little two or three minute, just, you know, like a nightly prayer for his parishioners. Isn't that he's great? He's doing it by Facebook Live. Love now, it. He's using a MacBook Pro 2017. He's using uh, he's using his AirPods as his microphone. That's not he's, bad. It could be better. You know, the, it could be better. So what I have recommended, and I'm actually going to set this up for him, is I'm, I've ordered him a Blue Yeti. That's fine. Uh, uh, yeah, because it has a USB uh, interface, so it plugs right into the computer. Facebook, yeah. when you set up Facebook or any live streaming thing, you tell it what the camera is, but you also tell it what the audio is. So the camera does not have to provide the audio. He just, you know, picks the Yeti. Blues are good. 
Honestly, uh, there are a lot of choices. Rode makes a series of podcasting mics that are also very good and inexpensive. Um, it um, would be worth doing that. We set up everybody. You notice Scott Wilkinson. He's got one of our Heil PR40s with a Focusrite Scarlet. That's what it plugs into. That turns the, the professional uh, connection coming out of the Heil or any mic into a USB connection. So you can get an interface box, and then any mic will work as well. So if they are, okay, if the church about, already has some mics, that's another way to do it. How about it? Um, how about if he had an iPhone 10 or 11? I don't, I'm not sure what his iPhone is. Would he be better broadcasting from that? Like yeah. The webcam than he yeah. would the MacBook. And Sure MacBook makes Pro? some microphones designed for the iPhone. It's the Motive line, M O T I V line, that give you much better audio than the iPhone microphone. And then he could stream in the camera on the iPhone. is superb. So yeah, that that'd be a lot better than a laptop. That's nice of you to do this. Thank you. And I think a lot of churches might end up doing this forever. It's a great solution. La, 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 so Jim Four has a Polk Signo S1 soundbar that he likes, um, and I'm sure it's I'm sure it's good. Polk makes great products, so um, I didn't really see those in the research I was doing about soundbars. And uh, hey, Tech Dino Loquacious, it's always so good to see you. Um, yeah, and the one thing I didn't do in my research about low cost audio improvements for TVs. Uh, was separate speakers. Um, for example, the ELAC debut B5s or B6s. B5s are probably, yes, uh, Logan 5 Polk Audio is still around. Hey, Superu, good to see you. Um, let me see about the ELAC. B I think I saw the B5, B6s at, uh, at about 250 bucks. So ELAC B5, I think, is probably... Um, let's see, ELAC B5 on Amazon, debut 2.0 B5, uh, 220, 230, 230 bucks for a pair. So it's a little over 200 bucks. I, that would have probably taken it out of my list for inexpensive audio options, but it's not much over 200. So, you know, I, I would certainly look at those as an alternative, but then I would really want to add a subwoofer and then you're talking about more money. Um, have you watched John Krasinski's Some Good News on YouTube? No, I have to do that. You, I have to okay, watch that. so there's one, there's a Hamilton one that's oh, really? unbelievable. Oh, man. It, actually, I've watched it many times and I cry every single time. Wow. I think it's his third, episode three. Okay. Or, SNG, Some Good, or SGN. Some, some Good, good news. news. Uh huh. <clears throat> Is it week two? Okay, it's week two, Scooter X is saying. But you'll know because it'll say Hamilton in it. But, but watch the whole right. thing because the setup is great. Wow, okay. Well, I, I don't think I knew about this before, but so I've learned We just started from you two today. weeks ago. You didn't learn oh, well, it? Or three weeks no. ago. It's brand new. Okay. Well, then I have to go, I have he's to go at look a, at it. He's not doing anything. So this is my, you know, a lot of these guys are home. They can't work. The thing is, it's so well produced. It's so well done that I think he's got a big team behind it. Mm -hmm. But it, but they intentionally make it look like he's doing it from his living room. It's really cute. Wow. <laughs> it's, it's a very it's high budget production that looks low budget. Yeah, yeah. It's very Engineered clever. low budget. Yep. Yeah, okay. Well, I'll have to, uh, I will definitely well check that out. Yeah. He's our, he's Jeep. the Tom Hanks of, of this generation, I think. John Krasinski? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jeep Talk Show says, I guess any sound bar would sound better than the speakers that come with a TV. I would have to say that's probably true in virtually all cases. There might be a, some sound bar that sounds so horrible that you'd rather have your TV speakers, but that would be rare. <laughs> that would be rare. Um, Maverick 56, uh, are AirPods as bad as Leo says? I think they sound great, but it's the only wireless earphones I've tried. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I don't think they sound very good. Any, any earbuds 
that do not seal your ear canals are not going to sound good. They're not going to have good bass. They're going to sound fizzy and tinny. Uh, you really need what are called in-ear monitors or in-ear headphones. And most importantly, you need to find the right ear tips. So these little things that stick in your ear, they come almost always with a variety of ear tips, flexible, either silicon, silicone or um, uh, uh, memory foam. And you stick them onto the ear pieces and you stick them in your ears. And the critical thing that I that people don't talk about nearly as often as they should or as much as they should is to find the ones that seal your ears, that seal your ear canal. Once your ear canals are sealed, then you're getting the best possible sound quality out of the ear, in-ear monitors or in-ear headphones. Um, and earbuds can't do that because they don't, aren't designed to seal your ear canal. And if the, they don't seal your ear canal, they just don't sound good. The AirPod Pro sound better because they do mostly seal. And really? they have noise canceling. But they're 250 bucks, and they're not, yeah. by any means, the best in class for that price. Right, So, right. yeah, Apple just makes a lot of money on kind of right. mediocre Though stuff. I've been, I've been listening to the Monoprice uh, in-ear, uh, wireless in-ear uh, uh, headphones, and they sound pretty good. Yeah. The, the one more true wire, uh, stylish True wireless earbuds are re or ear in ear monitors are really good. Believe it or not, the um, for wireless the uh, Samsung uh, Galaxy buds for like a hundred. I mean, they're not expensive. They're a lot cheaper. Are quite good and they seal. And so they do, do the, seal. Yeah, and so do the uh, the Jabra Elites. They're they're uh, pretty good. I haven't tried those. They're Bluetooth though, so Bluetooth is of necessity a little little worse. A little Scott, lower quality. Thank you. My pleasure. We'll talk again in a week. You bet. Stay safe. You bet. Look right. forward to it. You too. Thanks. Bye, bye. Bye. Well, hey, hey, hey. How are you today? Leo Laporte here, the tech guy. Time to talk computers, the internet, home theater, digital photography, smartphones, smart watches, sheltering in place, streaming your video. 8888-ASK-LEO. That's the phone number. 888-827-5536. Toll free from anywhere in the U.S. or Canada. I definitely have to put a piece together and i'm going to do it on um, on streaming because i think so many you know, first of all we're all many of us anyway using our phones or our computers to video call remember that was going to be the thing of the future i remember when i was a little kid going to the world's fair in new york city i think it was 1964 65 and AT&T had a video phone display. You know, for the, in the future, all uh, all telephones will have pictures, picture phones. And I remember in uh, the 70s, 2001, a space odyssey. Remember that? He's on the moon and he's calling his, his family and there's the wife and the daughter. Happy birthday. And <clears throat> as time went by, it seemed less and less likely. In fact, I... I thought, you know, nobody's ever going to use this because nobody wants to get dressed up for a phone call. You know, it's too intimate. It's easier just to use audio. But that has changed, has it not? <laughs> Suddenly, we're all making video calls. And programs that do that, like Skype and FaceTime and Viber and WhatsApp and Facebook Messenger and all the tools that do that are seeing huge growth. Because if you're locked inside, isn't it? nice i mean to be able to see each other i've been using it for for years uh my mom uh, back home uh, when i you know in providence when i call her i can see her she can see me she really likes that she has an iphone so we use face and an ipad so we use facetime uh my daughter i can't see her because she's you know at home quarantined but she has an android device so we use google's duo which is great when, when we have family uh, get-togethers, uh, we use Jitsi, which is an open-source uh, solution, J-I-T-S-I dot org. Very much like Zoom, but it's free and open-source. Uh, so there are a lot of solutions, a lot of ways to do this. And I think now this is this is shifted. If you go back and watch 2001, that phone call, he's calling from the moon to home with the mother and the daughter, and it's her birthday. Hi, Daddy. It's very much like a FaceTime call that we do now. He had to go into a big booth and has a big screen and stuff. But it's actually, it was prescient. It was, it is the way we're doing it. It just took a little extra time and it took us getting used to it. And I think this quarantine has really 
helped. We've kind of we've kind of gotten used to it. And I think it's wonderful to have a minister doing a prayer service every night. You can do it every night. You don't have to come to church. You can just watch it on Facebook. That's fantastic. And I don't think those things are going to go away. I think that this is a change in how we uh, communicate with one another. And, I, and in some ways, a change for the better. I think it's great. But we could all help get a little help in audio and uh, video production. Now we all have to think about that, what the backdrop looks like. Don't have a, a bright background behind you. Uh, best lighting is from the side, you know. It, at least at least in front of you, but but if maybe not straight in front of you, somewhat at an angle to the side, gets gives your face a little modeling, a dark side and a light side. It just looks a little if you're watching movies and stuff, it's never all flat, brightly lit. It's lit a little bit more from the side. Because that it just it looks more interesting. Audio Boy, people uh, uh, think it's all about the video. It's all about the pictures because that's what we're doing now. And for years, we also had terrible audio quality on our phones. But really, good audio makes a big difference. Really important. And uh, there are lots of inexpensive ways to get better audio than just coming out of your laptop or your phone. Um, better microphones and stuff. So I'm gonna uh, we'll put something together to show people how to how to do that. And especially for church groups and schools and others who are trying to figure out. You know, it doesn't have to look like broadcast television. In fact, it probably shouldn't. That's one of the things that's been good for broadcast television. Get a little bit more down to earth, a little bit less glitzy. Um, and so I'll, we'll, we'll talk a little. And, and if you have a question, you can call me. You can give me a ring, too. 8888-ASK-LEO. Alan in Seal Beach, California. Alan's next. Hi, Alan. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hi, Leo. I have a question regarding uh, Sophos releasing Sandboxy uh, to the open source. Isn't that community. great news? Yeah, I just heard about that myself. That's great. Well, I think it is, and that's the source of my question. There, there's a fellow on GitHub goes by the name of David Zantos. And he's already released a couple of fixes. Uh, but in his commentary, he says the uh, SBIE DRV SIS driver must be signed, but uh, appropriate certificates are prohibitively expensive. So he had to use the leak code signing certificate he found on the internet. Mm. So it could get flagged as potentially dangerous. So uh, have you ever heard of David Zantos? I haven't, but is it, that doesn't mean... Uh, it's safe it, to download the driver. Yeah, that doesn't mean he's not legit. It just means that he is, uh, like a lot of developers, he's not going to, you know, this is a tool he's giving away, and he can't afford to buy a, uh expensive certificate. Um, so let us I'll talk a little bit about this. Sandboxy, which originally was all about sandboxing IE, hence the name Sandboxy. When you sandbox software... You you in effect you put it in a in a, a a sealed box. The software runs, but it protects the rest of the operating system from the software. It makes it much harder for the software to for malware, for instance, to come from your browser into your system. So it's a really good technique. In fact, such a good technique. Microsoft's starting to adopt this for the next version of Windows. They call it a Windows X. They're gonna they're gonna use this kind of containerizing of all apps to protect it. There's a version of Linux uh, called Cubes that does this. It's a it's a very interesting way to make a more secure system. Sandboxy expanded beyond Internet Explorer to uh, be able to sandbox almost any app. Certainly the ones you'd want to sandbox are the ones where they're risky to use because they go out on the Internet. And so it was a great tool. Sophos bought it, but it kind of uh, you know, kind of faded away because they didn't keep it up to date. So, first of all, congratulations to Sophos, which is a, a for-profit security firm for instead of just letting it drift off, as most companies would do, said, yeah, we should give this to the community. Here's the source code. Let's fix it. And uh, and that's fantastic. That That means that anybody can come in, take the source code, and update it, make it better, and apparently that's what the Santos guy has done. I don't know him. But that's then then you get in the problem about using open source software. Uh, you know, you, this and there's no way to really, there's no magic bullet to this. Anybody can take the source code and make it malicious if they want. They could put it on GitHub. That's no seal of approval. That's just a place where open source code is distributed. It's owned by Microsoft, but it doesn't mean it's vetted by Microsoft. 
So there's always a risk, as there would be any time. Anytime you run software, there's an inherent trust that the software is 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 well written, does what it said it would do. And you'll always see this in the, in the terms of service. Does not in any way apply fitness. We can't guarantee it'll work because <laughs> they want to get off the hook. But most of the time, if it's from a responsible company, it does. And then there's no malicious, intentionally malicious stuff in there. And unless you're sophisticated enough to read the code, you wouldn't necessarily know. Open source is a little bit better because you can see everything he's doing. So one, you know, presumes that smarter people than you and I are looking at the, uh, you and me, are looking at the software to make sure that he's not done anything malicious. And so open source is better. When you're just downloading a program and you can't look at, you know, what's going on with a program, you really, that is a leap of trust. That is saying, well... I hope they don't do anything wrong, but at least with open source, it's a little bit safer. The certificate issue, it's a reasonable issue. You know, because of the way Sandboxy works, uh, it's security software. Uh, so, you, you, you know, you kind of, it, it needs to have some trust level built in, and so certificate is one way of doing that. I, um, I don't know anything about this guy. I would say before you run to download it, you, uh, you do some research. You know, read around, look on uh, Reddit, look on GitHub, w read the comments on GitHub, right? See if people are looking at the yeah, code. Vanto seems to be, uh, he, his name appears over several uh, different... Uh, well, that's another uh, thing. Authoring. Yeah, if you look at GitHub, you get, a, you get a rating based on your how much, how active you are, how much you contribute. If he has a high rating, that's a good sign. You know, it doesn't guarantee he's, he's not a... For years. Yeah, so I don't know. I'll, I'll look at this. Uh, I, you know, and, and you, you hope that others do. And if there are no alarm bells after a week or two, then, uh, that's great. I mean, here's the opportunity because Sophos has said, Hey, have at it guys. You're probably going to see other people doing this. There'll be other versions. One, the ideal situation would be for some open source group. Often these are just little, you know, com people, like-minded people form to form a group, takes it over. Somebody runs it. You know, as many open source projects have have a you know a benevolent dictator who runs it, contributors. There's some sort of process that that it goes through before people start uh, you know just putting code into it. We're not there yet because it's just happened, but eventually I would hope that somebody would that this would become an open source project, and at that point you'll be able to have with some confidence install it. It'll probably come you know easily installed as well. Uh, it's this is good news, but it's early days, so unknown right i'm glad you asked though well, thank you yeah thank you alan so it's a really good question sandboxy is a great program much needed there are other ways to do this and as i said what's really good news is you're going to see, see microsoft starting to do this in the next version of windows and that really will be the probably the ideal way to do it you know they'll have this built in they already do uh, sandboxing for their uh, uh, antivirus software defender which is very smart it's a clever way to protect you. So uh, I, I honor them for, uh, for that. And I really want to give kudos to Sophos because we want more companies to do this. Instead of just letting software wither away, uh, give it to the community. See if there's interest in the community. Let the community fix it. 8888-ASK-LEO, the phone number. Let's talk. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. More calls right after this. The Tech Guy Podcast this week brought to you by, of course, as always, LastPass. And really, in a way, LastPass makes sure that the Tech Guy show and the whole Twit network is safe all the time because we use it. We use LastPass Enterprise at work. And if you are preparing a remote workforce, as we have, pretty much everybody's working from home, all our producers, many of our editors, all our office staff, it's important to keep security top of mind. With, with aiding, without Im impeding employee productivity. And I love LastPass for that reason. In fact, I'm thanking my lucky stars that we, uh, we started using LastPass several years ago. And now it's easy. When we send somebody home, they already have access to everything they need because they already have LastPass. In fact, they're pretty familiar with LastPass because one of the benefits of being employed at Twit is you get a personal version of LastPass for yourself as well as access to the enterprise LastPass. Transitioning your workforce 
from the office to the home is tough. It's complicated. You know that. But LastPass is here to make the transition easier without decreasing security. Very important. So let's talk a little bit about uh, security. Um, there, are, First of all, one of the problems you're going to face is there's an uptick in corona-related uh, phishing attacks and emails, right? Here's one good thing you're going to like. LastPass will not autofill passwords, will never autofill passwords on suspicious websites. It's really well set up so that it verifies that it's filling in that password at an appropriate spot, never at a malicious spot, number one, right? And because in most cases, your employees don't actually get the passwords. They think it's just a bunch of black dots. You don't have to worry about them going around LastPass and entering it by hand. They can't. They don't know it which also means they can't share it. So that's a very nice feature of LastPass. If you uh, are using a VPN, a lot of you are, to log into the corporate network, LastPass adds another layer of security to your VPN with biometric multi-factor authentication. That's fantastic. They have, to, they have to face ID or touch ID or fingerprint on a device before they can use LastPass. By the way, we insist on that. That's one of the – there's more than 100 admin policies that the uh, company has on LastPass Enterprise, so the IT department can do. And one of the things – Russell has a, turns a lot of them on, sets a lot of them. He's really good on security. But one of the things he requires <clears throat> is all our employees lose, use two-factor. Uh, and I don't mean like a text message. <laughs> I mean either a, 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 a dongle like this, this is my YubiKey, or they use an authenticator program. Uh, in many cases, employees are using single sign-on. There are 1,200-plus LastPass-supported uh, single sign-on apps in the world, which makes it very easy because then the authentication is, you approve this? Yes, and you're good. And I love that feature. I wish more apps did that. LastPass makes it easy. And that's the other side of this. So LastPass makes you more secure, but also they make it easy for your employees. And, you know, if it's easy for employees, they're less likely to try to get around your security, right? Single sign-on, offline mode. You know, sometimes employees are in a sketchy circumstance. Their Wi-Fi is coming and going. Maybe the kids are using it for school and it's down for a little bit. LastPass works in offline mode which I think is really great for both password management and multi-factor authentication. So your employees can gain access no matter where they be. And as always, and I've mentioned this before, but I think it's really important. Your last pass vault is never decrypted anywhere, but on device, iOS, Android, Windows, Mac, Linux, wherever I am, I have LastPass. but last pass doesn't get the keys. No one gets the keys, but me. That means I can get access to it on every device, but that's the only place that, that stuff lives unencrypted. And that means I can use it, and I do, as my secure enclave. I put my passport, my driver's license, social security numbers, everything in there. That's the safest place I've got, my last pass vault. I use it all the time. You'll love the admin. I mentioned that. The end user experience is great. They have a globally dispersed, ready-to-respond support and success team that will help you with a deployment. They're there for you. Uh, LastPass enables IT teams to remain in complete control over which employees access which resources no matter where those employees are. You get unified visibility over access and authentication with their dashboard. I love LastPass. And the good news is increased security doesn't have to be more complex. It doesn't even have to be less convenient. LastPass is easy to use, your employees will like it, and you'll feel so much more secure. Start your journey today. Visit lastpass.com slash twit. Do what we did at twit. Do what I've done for more than a decade at home. Use lastpass. Lastpass.com slash twit. Thank you, LastPass, for supporting the podcast. Leo Laporte, the tech guy, 8888, 88, ask Leo, the phone number, Alan, oh, I did just talk to Alan, let's go to, I think it's Rob, yeah, in Arlington, Texas is next. Hi, Rob. Hello, Leo, how are you doing? I'm wonderful, how are you? I'm doing well, sir. You know, before I ask my question, back when you were at CES, I got the chance to go out there uh, because of my wife's company, yeah. and I was trying to catch up with you, uh, but I, it seemed to always be 30 minutes before. Yeah, we were moving fast. <laughs> but I did get to meet your your, your uh, friend, Ant, and spent oh, good. a few minutes talking with him. It was really cool. My, my uh, colleague, Ant Pruitt, was out there with me. We were doing Leo and Ant's excellent CES adventure, and we were running around. I think we did 20 or 30 pieces uh, over the three oh days. Gosh. Yeah. Yes, catch it, trying to get as much of it as we can. Now, in hindsight, you know, CES was early January, 
man, it had been one month later, it would have been a, a nightmare, a disaster. So Ooh, we're kind no of, doubt. We're kind of, I, I may never go to CES again. You know, people always complain about getting sick, but gee, it might be a death-defying act to go to a conference anymore. Eesh, eesh, I'm glad we went. What can I do for you? Well, you know, back in the old days, we would have the point and shoot, and uh, you know, I'd upload those to my uh, to my uh, computer, and then back those up. And then, as Google Photos came, I was doing the same thing and uploading them to Google Photos or backing them up, I should say. And then, my uh, from my s smartphone, as I started taking more photos, uh, they would automatically go to Google Photos. But now we're in this day where they go to Google Photos, but then they get deleted from the phone. And I have several years now of photos that I have no other copy other than on the Google Photos library. And so I'm trying to find, is there a way to get all those photos backed up from Google Photos back to a local hard drive? Yeah. Other than just going one by one. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it does look like you have to go one by one or fold, yeah, best folder by folder, right? Uh, yeah. So there is something called Google Takeout which is not Chinese food. It is actually a really good idea. And this goes back, I want to give credit to, uh, I think it was Brian Fitzpatrick who came up with this. Early on, uh, Google said, we, sh we should make it, actually, I think it was Brian who really said, hey, Google, we, <laughs> he was an employee there, we should make it so that people are giving us a lot of data. It should be easy to get our data out. It should be easy for them to get their data out. So uh, Google, con Google Takeout, if you go to takeout.google.com, you could see all of the places you've, you've, you know, you've given data to. And one of them is Google Photos. So you can, if you want, use Google Takeout to download every bit of data you've given to Google, including the Android device configuration service, the assistant notes and lists, blogger, calendar, Chrome, classic sites, classroom, cloud print. I'm just through the C's, contacts. But if you go down to uh, a little farther, you'll see Google Photos. Your photos and videos from Google Photos and other Google services like Google Plus. Put our hand over our heart for the late lamented Google Plus. Blogger and Hangouts. There are some uh, choices you can make. Uh, as as far as uh, what formats and what folders, uh, the default is all photo albums. So um, you can you can then go through it if you want and uncheck albums you don't want, but it will download them. Now it's going to download them in a kind of funky format, but the images will be there. They'll just be other. Uh, I think you get an XML file, so it means there'll be other uh, textual information. But the photos, it says. We'll export your Google Photos data in the following formats. Original format, if you had uploaded originals and were set up to do that. If you, for instance, had a Google Pixel phone, for instance, you got unlimited originals. PNG, JPEG, and WebP, MP4s for videos. Then there'll be metadata. They'll be uh, in a JSON file, and that'll be, you could throw that stuff out. You don't need the metadata. What you really want is the photos. So that's the way to do it, takeout.google.com. Well, I thank you, Leo, because I, I keep... It's not obvious. Stories. <laughs> well, I, and I know it's not. There's so about a million answers out on the Internet, but I keep hearing these stories about people getting locked out of their Google account because of... That's why it's account. important to do this from time to time. You bet. <clears throat> Back up your Google data, because if you got locked out, psh, I have 100,000 photos there. It would be mm -hmm. the, end of, the end of the world for me. Yeah, I completely agree. So yeah, never. While it's wonderful to have Google Photos as a backup, it should not be your only. This is true of all backup, right? Yeah. I say this all the time. Just because you have a disk labeled backup and you put everything on it, <clears throat> doesn't mean it's backup if it's the only copy. Then it's the original, and you want to treat that with you know you got to back it up. So yeah, never just trust one place. Google Photos is one of several places your photos should be. Yes, sir. Hey, I'm Thank glad you, you asked. Much. Yeah, and by the way, this applies to everything you've stored on Google. So uh, if you bought books or movies, if you bought app, I mean, just it goes on and on. If you want to see, takeouts.google.com. It's one of the reasons I often give Google a pass because I feel like this, is, this shows their goodwill, right, that they do this. Johnny Jet, travel guru, coming up. Stay here.
Theo Laporte, the tech guy. Hello, Johnny Jet Travel Guy. Good to see you. Good to see you, Not too. Not going anywhere, are you? Nope. I was actually supposed to be getting on a plane tonight to uh, my to Puerto Rico to go to the WTTC conference and then to Miami to speak at the Sea Trade conference. So are they doing these conferences virtually, or do they just go, uh, why bother? They canceled. Actually, the Puerto Rico one actually was changed to Cancun, uh, okay. and then they just canceled it. Yeah. And then um, the Sea Trade, they postponed it. So they, they're talking about in September. That's a cruise conference, right? That's a big. It's the largest cruise conference. I just don't see how it's happening. Yeah, I mean, there's no. Uh, what are you going to talk about? How we're all going out of business? Heck, uh, there's not much to say. <laughs> well, I think there's a lot to talk about. I just think um, <laughs> I don't think they just want everyone from around the world. Well, no, it's not you safe, know, obviously. But they could aggregate. But, but this is what companies are starting to do: is virtual conferences. But I guess. Even that is risky because you have to get technicians and stuff. In a, I mean, it's not. It's still Google's abandoned their virtual conference. They decided not to do it. I think Facebook did the same thing. Microsoft says they're not going to have any in-person conferences through 2021 till June 2021 at the earliest. A year from yeah. next month or two months from now. So 14. Yeah, I was months. supposed to go to an IPDW, IPW conference, which is the largest travel conference probably. I and mean, this is when last year they rented out Disneyland. That's how big it is. Wow. And, uh, and, and I mean, it's only like 5,000 people, but that's how much money they have. They behind rented them. out Disneyland. They do it every year. So, or, or wow. third Orlando, they rent out, you know, Disney World. Wow. And, um, but the thing is, they just canceled it for this year. It was Vegas this year and they, they canceled it. They didn't, they're not doing virtual. So, a lot of people, they're not going to deal with that. I think it's a lot of pressure like on Vegas TV. to reopen. A lot of money going down the tubes there. A um, lot. And and I know the mayor of uh, Las Vegas and the governor of Nevada both are you know find this very challenging. But uh, what are you going to sure. do? This is this is as bad as a cruise ship. You're all gathered together gambling. You know, yeah, that's as bad it, as a cruise ship. You're eating at the buffets. It's, it's just well, as they're going to they're going to they're going to have someone manning the buffets. They're not going to have, have plastic dividers there. at the roulette, at the craps table. So, yeah. They'll limit the people. I assume they'll limit the people. It's until, still, it's still not going to be safe. And everyone's going to have to wear a mask. And actually, Air Canada just came out. Actually, not Air Canada. Excuse me, Canada. The country in Canada. General, yes, is now requiring all airline passengers starting on Monday to wear face masks. Appropriate. Why wouldn't you want to? That's the new normal, and you're going to see that normal. here in the U.S. They're they're going to say the same. I have a theory that face masks. We're going to get so used to this over the next year because that's how long it's going to go on until there's a vaccine. That face masks will be the new neckties. That will all be that will all be <laughs> not a bad thing. I think they. I'm making fashion forward. I've got a new business making fashion forward face masks. How do you like that? That pattern, huh? That's pretty, huh? I I like it, but I don't think uh, like. I don't think a lot of people realize that most travelers already have a face mask at home. So what? I just opened this up. What is that? First time I'm opening this up, by the way. This is a, a United 747. Oh, those uh, amenity, amenity kits. Kit. Yeah, I love those. Yeah. So when you get on a plane, they give you an amenity kit. Eye mask. Yeah, th your eye mask could be a face mask. That's pretty good. If you're stuck. Better than nothing. If you're stuck. Yeah. There, so... A, a lot of people don't realize they already have a face mask at home if we are travelers. Yeah. But that is... Um, what a world. What a world. Uh, what? It, what? It, so what is the travel business saying about all this? I mean, are they just shaking their heads going, I don't know? Yeah, I mean, they're... There's still of plenty of planes of flying. I saw some pictures of Air Canada yes. turning their 777 giant Actually, passenger just, plane into a cargo plane, taking all the seats out as a cargo plane. Yes, actually, Air Canada did that as well. That's if what I'm you, talking about. Yeah. Um, on my Twitter feed, I just took two screenshots this morning of the of the airspace above the U.S. and above uh, Southern Europe. Yeah, and it's com it's it's completely different. And actually, just you can just go to flightaware.com/live, and that will even show you the, the, the real time. <clears throat> excuse me. What's going on right now? And um, it's, it's far. Fewer, you'd be amazed how many fewer. flights are still flying over the U.S. Yeah. within the U.S. When you know, look at Italy. There's like four flights over Italy. Yeah, but look at all the flights. This is this is today. 
Look at all the flights. This was this morning. This morning. But, all... but it's the same right now. You just look right now. And, yeah. and you know, one person on uh, Twitter commented, well, this is nighttime in, in Europe. It wasn't. When I when I did it, it was 4 in the afternoon. 4 p.m. Yeah. Uh, so. Wow. So why do you think there's so many flights still going off in the U.S.? I think there's a few reasons. One is a lot of it's cargo. There's also, and because Europe has a better rail system, but still, I think the airlines are still doing it because of the new, um, the money that they're, the government's giving the airlines. They're making them still fly these routes. They have to have approval to, to cancel their routes. Oh. And also because they keep the pilots in, um, trained, because I th supposedly, I'm not sure if this is true, one of my pilot friends said, you know, if a pilot doesn't fly for ninety days, oh yeah, they have to get retrained. They have to be retrained, yeah. and that's like thirty thousand dollars to retrain. So them. They just this is practice, but there's often so. very few, if any, people on there. I saw a picture of a, a flight of one young woman on the plane, the whole plane. She had the well, plane the, to herself. The TSA tweeted today. They tweet every day, but yesterday they said ninety-five thousand people went through the. Right. Um, security yesterday, 95,000 people compared to 2.6 million, 2.6 million. JFK wow. alone gets a hundred thousand travelers a day. And this was all of us 95,000. So, and, and, and that includes airport workers and all the crew. So there's very few, uh, passengers, mm. but I do have a good website for you. I just tweeted it out. So for people who are stuck at home, Nikon, which you might have talked about on one of your photography shows, is offering free photography classes until uh, through April 30th. This is such a great time. It is a great time if to catch up. I just watched some time at home to learn something. It is. Yeah. I mean, a lot of places are doing it. Yale's offering. A lot of the universities are offering um, free classes. But this one is uh, photography, which obviously every traveler is interested in, or almost every traveler. And I just watched one with Brian Scary, who's a huge National Geographic oceanographer. And, you know, I listened to his class. That's and it's so just cool. amazing to hear his um, his experiences. I love these. I mean, you know, I've been fortunate to kind of hang out with some pretty good photographers. And I love it because they have such great stories and they know so much about their craft. And to learn from a great photographer is a wonderful thing. Hey, uh, so and take now you can do it for free. This. Yeah, take advantage just, of this. Look at I just that. put it in the chat room and I tweeted it. Yeah, and, that's neat. Um, that's neat. So yeah. uh, you are uh, you are not you're not going to travel anywhere. The family, everybody doing all right, staying home. We're all doing well. Uh, the they, kids they closed probably, the Canadian border. By the way, they extended it for another thirty days today. Johnny's so, wife is a was from Canada, so she can't go home. She yeah, can't visit not family. That she wants to right now. No. But, uh, but that's interesting. So the border's closed. You can't go to and from. You know, that's well, one it's thing. closed it's, for non-essential travel. What's kind of weird is we're used to uh, seeing news from around the world. All of a sudden, it's just about us. And, and yeah. you wonder, well, what's going on in, in other countries? Are they going through the same thing? I think they are. We know about Italy. We know a few countries. But, you know, a lot, you, you just don't hear anymore because we're so concerned with our own issues. Right. Well, the world has got a lot It's a lot smaller. Larger. Or no, larger. larger. Yes, that's right. Our no, world has gotten before, smaller I, I, because I, I we're eliminating think, the rest of the world. Yes. Yeah, I wouldn't think twice about jumping on a plane and going to New York for a meeting or Hawaii. Not anymore. I've gone to Hawaii for dinner. Not anymore. Would, not anymore. Johnnyjet.com. That's his website. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. More calls right after this. <clears throat> not anymore. Yeah, like I was wondering, how's Switzerland doing? No idea. No idea. Well, I, I'm sure I, I get this update. By the way, do you still get those um, updates from the... I do. Uh, I do. The travel updates, yeah. Right. But I also get one from another service, which actually lists everything. Every day I can see which countries are doing what. Oh, what's that? Uh, you know what? I'll, I have to do some I research. I get the State Department. I get the one from the UK, I think, that you recommend. No, this one's from an insurance company. Oh, interesting. Yeah. But they do a really good job because they pay this third company... It's really for the safety, so it tells you when there's hot spots. Right. I think it's called hot spots. Let me even find it. Yeah, but I mean, I'll, I'll talk the, about it next week because it's a great little thing for travelers. Yeah, to, that's the uh, scary thing. To, to get. Now's the time, though, to look back at your photos, go through your photos, and think about, you know, fantasize about the time that we'll... I, our first uh, trips back will probably be 
either in the U.S. or if we do travel uh, internationally, maybe river river cruises. Right. I, I think this is a year of the staycation. Staycation. People are going to stay close to home. Yep. And um, they won't unless in, until they find a vaccine, they're gonna they're gonna want to stay close to home. Except people who are under twenty five. They don't really. Well, I think you know, one thing that's going to happen is that there are going to be there's going to be a group of people. Maybe my son is in this group. We're not sure yet. Once we get the antibody tests, we'll know who uh, who are immune, who have in effect gone through it and in effect vaccinated themselves. Right. And uh, those people are going to have a grand old time. Henry will be able to buy tickets cheap, go back to Asia, have fun. He needs. Uh, a, I, I I'm with you 100, percent but I just read an article today that. They weren't sure. If well, it, we don't know. Yeah, that's right. That's the problem there. Well, we'll find out before too long. <laughs> like 163 people in, in, I think it was South Korea that re They got re it again? It. Oh, yeah. God. So. Oh, that's a That's, that's the bad. problem. Yeah. That's the problem. Yeah, that's really bad. If you're not immune, you're really. Then it makes yeah. me wonder, are they going to be able to do a vaccine? What if they didn't? What if they couldn't come up with a working vaccine? They're going to figure something out. Then we just have to say, you know what? <laughs> Screw it. We're going out. Game's over. Game's over. Uh, <laughs> and then, well, I mean, that's, I think, what's going to happen in the long run. I think at some point, people are just going to say, look, if you're a vulnerable population, you continue to quarantine the rest of us. we got to go back to work. Yeah. I think that's they're, what's going to happen. They're, they're going back to work. People people got to go back to work. I'm but, worried, though, because the, the disease itself, even in young people, sounds really horrible. It does. I, I have friends. I, one of my friends was Young on a people. ventilator. Yeah. So you may all go out to work. I'm gonna. I'm in the vulnerable population, so I'm staying home, and I can't anyway. But uh, well, my dad can't. He doesn't. He's 91. He does not want to stay. Never home again anymore. should he go. Oh, but he can't. But he doesn't want to go out. He's social. I right know. before it happened, he went. He went to a bar. I go. You can't oh, be going to a bar right oh, now. Your poor dad. Yeah. But, you know. What are you gonna tell us? Yeah. The guy's 91. He's got to be able to do what he wants to do. Yeah. <sighs> So uh, anyway. All right, sir. Have a great, on that note, have a wonderful week and I'll see you next week. All right. Take, take care. Bye-bye. See ya. Leo Laporte, the tech guy, 8888. Ask Leo the phone number. Back to the phones. Line four is uh, John in Patterson, California. Hello, John. Hi, Leo. Thanks for calling. What can I do for you? Hi, um, I'm just going to let you know it's our fifth anniversary, and remember, and my wife is we're real big fans of you. Oh, happy anniversary! That's wonderful. You know, it's it's my fifteenth anniversary, not for getting married, but for the fifteenth anniversary of starting the podcast network. Back in it was April seventeenth, two thousand five. Yep. So your fifth, that. my fifteenth. <laughs> well, anyways. Uh, Congratulations, Leo. Um, Thank you. My question is, um, right now I have several uh, spinning hard drives where I'm backing up music and photos and videos, and I know that eventually drives do fail, but I'm wondering that now that the cost of SSD drives are falling, are they just as, are they more reliable? Ah, oh, that's a really interesting question. There's, right. Yeah, over time, you know, initially when we saw SSD drives, there was some real concern about reliability, but the manufacturers of SSD drives have done some clever tricks. Um, like all drives, they over-provision. They give you actually more capacity than you're buying. And that allows them when a part of the drive wears out, and this is true for all drives, spinning and SSDs, to market unusable and use a new, one of the unused sectors to replace it. That gives any drive longer life. And since all drives have periodic sector failures, it's a necessity. They also do on SSD something quite clever because one of the risks on an SSD is the cells, the memory cells that you're writing to, have a limited number of read-write cycles. And it's not a huge number. So you don't want to keep writing to the same cells over and over. When SSDs first came out, they didn't do anything to take care of that, and it was very easy to burn an SSD out. I have a friend who put the swap disk, you know, the Windows swap disk on an SSD to see if it would be faster, and because so much disk activity was happening, it burned the drive out in a matter of days. The way SSD manufacturers handle that now is something called wear leveling, where they 
use algorithms to make sure that no one cell gets written to too often. They want to level it out across all the cells. So between over-provisioning and wear leveling, it seems to me that SSDs are now as reliable, if not more reliable, than spinning drives. Remember, spinning drives are have moving parts, and so that makes them more vulnerable. SSDs don't to things like heat, friction. Uh, you know, they have bearings in them. They have <laughs> heads that are going up and down. None of this on an SSD. An SSD is just it's static. It doesn't move. It's just memory being read and written to and read and written to. So while there are disadvantages, there are reasons both sides, both kinds of platforms would wear out. I think in the long run, SSDs are going to be more reliable, and I think probably are now more reliable. Certainly, I don't buy spinning drives anymore. The only, there's only one place I put spinning drives, and it's because of the single advantage spinning drives have, which is they're cheap. The price per gigabyte is lower on a spinning drive than on an SSD. That difference is narrowing, but it's still the case. So I put uh, spinning drives in my network-attached storage devices. Those are big boxes, usually with multiple drives, four, five, six, twenty drives in there. And you use you can use slower, less expensive, but more capacity drives in there so that you have a big capacity disk. The other reason you can do that in a network-attached storage or multi-drive enclosure is because it's using something called RAID, so that even if one drive fails, you pull it out, you put in another one, and no data is lost. They have redundancy. So for I would continue to use spinning drives in network-attached storage and other RAID devices, but any time you're using a single drive, whether it's external for backup or an internal drive, I think an SSD is the right choice. I think it's a little too pricey right now to put SSDs in RAID arrays, like network-attached storage. So if you're using that for backup, like a Drobo, for instance, which uses multiple drives, or a NAS, like a Synology, which uses multiple drives, for those, I think spinning drives are fine. But if you uh, want speed, and I think reliability equivalent to that of a spinning drive, Everywhere else, I use SSDs. When I buy a new laptop, it's a solid-state drive. When I buy a new desktop, it's a solid-state drive. Uh, external drives, solid-state. I have solid-state everywhere, and I think that that's fine. I haven't seen any specific studies, but just anecdotally and from my own experience, I think nowadays, thanks to wear leveling uh, and over-provisioning, I think SSDs are as reliable. So my answer, John, is go ahead and use SSDs for long-term backups. You know, spinning drives have problems if you're going <laughs> to... My friend Alex Lindsay does a, uses a lot of capacity because he does video. And, you know, uh, one movie can occupy several hard drives, right? But what he does is he takes them out of service, wraps them in bubble wrap, put, puts them in the closet. <clears throat> That's okay, but honestly, a spinning drive, if it sits for a few years... There are problems. There's something called stiction where the head can't lift up off the platter, gets stuck. The bearings can freeze up from it non-use. I think even for if you're going to wrap it up in bubble wrap and put it in the closet, even for that, an SSD is going to be more reliable. So I see no reason not to go with SSD these days. And once the price per gigabyte for SSDs gets low enough, I don't know if it'll ever... The, the reason it may never reach the price of a spinning drive is because spinning drives continue to get less and less expensive all the time. So it's they may never catch up, but but it's got... SSDs are well below 10 cents a gigabyte now. And that's to me, that was the magic number. And, they, and they've gotten there. They absolutely have gotten there. Great question, Paul. Thank you. I appreciate it. Bob in Los Angeles, Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hi, Bob. Hey, Leo. How are you doing? Wonderful. How are you? Good. Hey, I've uh, used a couple of your products you recommended. I'm using the Brave browser, which has really been Isn't good. Isn't that great? Love that browser. Yeah. yeah. And then I used Hover to uh, get a website. Nice. Thank you. On behalf of our yeah. sponsors. <laughs> yeah, the question I have for you is uh, right now having a lot of uh, uh, COVID-19 time on my hand. I've been working the last couple of years to develop as a uh, novelist. Oh, great. And I'm wondering right now with Windows 7, Windows 10 situation, and all the horror stories I keep hearing from 
some friends of mine that have the Windows 10 upgraded and also bought the new one. Seems like there's a lot of problems there. And I'm wondering, should I consider using Apple products for writing? Well, of course, Apple's Pages uh, is free, and you've got it. If you're using an Apple Mac or an iPad, well, it's Pages is a great choice. It depends what you're looking for in writing. I think word processors like Microsoft Office and Apple's Pages have far more features than a writer wants. A writer wants clean, right? You, 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 the cleaner the page, the more you can focus on writing. So I actually, let's take a break because we have to anyway. And when we come back, I'm going to talk about, stay on the line if you would, because I'd like to talk about writing tools and what might work better. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. That's a great question. It's going to give me a chance to plug some of my favorite writing tools. So you're still there, right, Bob? Yes, I am. Oh, good. Do you mind if we uh, you hang on and I come back in five minutes? Because I think no, it's a great, great subject. Yeah, thank you. And I was wondering if you could ever do a show on four writers. You know, I love that idea. I'd be glad to be a part of it and ask all the questions as a new writer. So. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I have written. <laughs> it is more fun to have written than to write. I still do magazine articles and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I don't know if we would want to do a weekly show, um, but uh, I think we should definitely talk about this subject because it's a very interesting subject, and I do have some Thank strong you. thoughts about it. Um, Great, I'd love to hear them. Good. Okay, hang on. Just be about five minutes. Okay, Thanks, thank you. Bob. The Tech Guy Podcast is brought to you today by ExpressVPN. Boy, there couldn't be a better time to be an ExpressVPN customer. If you're stuck at home, you probably don't think about internet privacy. You figure, well, it's my home network, right? I'm private. No. No. Fire up incognito browser in your browser, right? You think, no one could see what I'm doing. I'm completely private. That is absolutely not the case. All incognito mode or privacy mode or... You know, that different browsers have different names for it. All it does is keep that site from saving cookies to your hard drive. But doesn't mean your Internet service provider can't see every single thing you're doing. Even when you clear your browsing history, even in the incognito mode, your Internet service provider can see every single website you visit. Because you're going through them. That's why a VPN is so great. It, it, it hides what you're doing completely from... Bad guys, yes, but also from your nosy ISP. And most nosy ISPs are either selling your information or putting, I can't believe they do this, ads into your browsing. Never. Not with ExpressVPN. When I'm at home, I don't, I don't go online without ExpressVPN. You shouldn't either. It makes sure your ISP can't see what you're doing. It, all your internet connectivity, including DNS, is routed through ExpressVPN's secure servers. Each ExpressVPN server has an IP address that's used not just by you, but thousands of other users. So it's completely anonymized. No one knows who's using that server at any given time. And by the way, with their trusted server technology, that server software spins up when you log in, spins down when you log out, and at no point can it write to hard drive. So not only does ExpressVPN do no logging, they can't do any logging. They can't in any way save any trace of your visit. So you are absolutely private from ExpressVPN too. And man, is it easy to use. One tap of a button on any device, Mac, Windows, iOS, Android, it's the fastest, most trusted VPN on the market. CNET rated it number one. So did Wired. So did The Verge. So do I. It's what I use, what you should use. Protect your online activity today at home and anywhere else you go with a VPN I use to, to, to secure my privacy. Our special link, expressvpn.com slash tech guy. Please use that. That way they know you saw it here. That helps us a lot. And it'll get you an extra three months free when you buy a one-year package, which makes it pretty affordable too. Expressvpn.com slash tech guy protect your online privacy with expressvpn expressvpn.com slash tech guy thank you expressvpn we appreciate your support and i appreciate your support by using that address now back to the show well hey 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 how are you today leo laporte here i'm the tech guy that means it's time i'm your tech guy it's time to talk tech computers the internet home theater digital photography smartphones smart watches all that jazz, 8888-ASK-LEO is the phone number. Website, techguylabs.com, 888-827-5536. We've been talking to Bob. 
He's in Los Angeles. Uh, he's been using, I guess, Microsoft Office. Is that what you've been using? Word for writing? He wants yeah. to take up writing? Yeah, and yeah. Word uh, has every is everything but the kitchen sink. <laughs> it's just tons of stuff in there. Stuff you'll never use. Revision, tracking, you know, formatting, writing books, all sorts of stuff. Now, a lot of times when you submit, you'll want to submit in Word document format. A lot of editors want that. There's a variety of reasons, especially the revision tracking that they might want to use Word. But you don't need to write in it. And I wouldn't because I think uh, it's just distracting. Uh, there is There are uh, ways to look at a Word document that have are distraction-free. They yeah. have a, a preview and so forth. But uh, I, I like to use something a little simpler, to be honest. Now, you said you're on a Mac. No, I, I, I'm on a um, regular computer. Uh, oh, well, so you don't have access to Apple's pages or anything like that. Well, I do have an iPad. Oh, I see. Um, yeah, the only reason I wouldn't use an iPad is just because the keyboard isn't as good as the keyboard on your computer. Right. Yeah. So uh, comfort's important. <laughs> I'll tell you, I'll, I'll offer you a program that I think I think uh, you might like. There are a number of programs that are designed for distraction-free writing. And what they generally present is the same thing you would get in the old days if you put a piece of paper into a typewriter, a blank page. Now, some people find the blank page intimidating, but the good news is there's nothing to fiddle with. <laughs> <laughs> and at least for me, the biggest problem I face as a writer is procrastination. I know writers that take Solitaire, Minesweeper, every, all the games off of their computer, because if it's there, they'll go, let me think about this next paragraph, and they'll open it up, and three hours go by. So, yeah. so that's the biggest challenge for me as a writer, is distractions, any, anything... You know, the blank page is intimidating. Anything to avoid that. On the other hand, what a lot of people have told me is just type. Just type. Just doesn't matter if the words come out. <laughs> Don't type all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy a thousand times. That's uh, that's probably not a good thing. But but just start writing. Don't be critical of it. Just get it out on the page. And and over time, it frees itself up. The There are all sorts of tricks for this. But... Uh, I think eliminating distractions is a great start. There are a number of tools. You already have a note, a notepad on your right. computer. That is a pretty distraction-free tool, but it's not an attractive tool. I'm going to refer you to a free program I like a lot. I used to write on Macs and Windows and Linux. It's called Typora, T-Y-P-O-R-A, typora.io. And it is designed... First of all, it's free, which I really like. It's designed to be attractive, which I really like. In fact, they have a number of themes built in, and you can download more. So you can get a typeface and a style you really like. But it's also designed to be clean, like nothing on the page, just a blank page that you can type into. Don't be fooled, though, because uh, it, while it does have a blank page, it has some valuable features. For instance, I keep track of my word count. I often write for magazines, and they'll say, you got 800 words, and uh, so it's nice to keep track of word count. You're, you're writing a novel. Word count doesn't matter to you, but I like that feature. So you can turn on a little tiny word count just in the upper right-hand corner. It also supports a form of formatting. Now, you don't need to know this or worry about it. But, it, but I like to have it. It's called Markdown. And what Markdown lets you do is, is without going into the Word menu and selecting italic or bold or header or anything, just in, at, keep typing. To make something bold, for instance, you surround it with asterisks. To make it italic, you surround it with underlines, that kind of thing. You keep typing. You can do bulleted lists, number lists. It takes you about, I'd say, take about half an hour to understand and use Markdown effectively. That's nice. So if you do want formatting, you don't go to the menu. You don't take your hands off the keyboard. You just type the formatting you want, and it supports it. If you're writing a movie script, for instance, that can be very handy. Markdown can actually format the movie script uh, as as your you know producer or director would want to see it. I, would, I think Typora is really, really great. Um, you can do tables. You can do a lot more with it. You can import and export. So after you finish your great American novel, you can export it into Word so that you know the editor will get it in a format he likes. You're not stuck. It's just making a plain text file. 
That's another, by the way, another strong recommendation when you're looking at a writing tool. Word processors have proprietary formats. Microsoft Word has Doc and DocX, right? Uh, Pages right. has its own. And those are there. If you open them up, they're not, you can't read them. They're all weird and funky. That's not a good thing. What you want is plain text. Which anybody can read anytime. You can copy and paste from it. You can go from Notepad to Typora back and forth. It'll be the same. To Notepad also plain, is, does plain text. So I think for a writer, since it's the words you care about, plain text is the most important. What about what about um, dictation software? Uh, so Windows has it built in. Um, all operating systems now have it built in. So it, it's generally stored in the accessibility, in the case of Windows Accessibility Control Panel. And you can turn, o turn on the dictation. And yeah, you can dictate right into Notepad or right into Typora. I, I think that's fine uh, if you don't want to type. And sometimes, yeah, for some people that's, um, that's a little easier. Now, there are other tools designed for th different needs. So if you're just writing and you want to write a blank piece of paper like a typewriter is the best. But for some people, they're doing a lot of research, and they want a tool that, that puts their research side by side with their writing. And those people, you know, typically will use a tool uh, like Scrivener, which is very, very popular uh, on the, um, I, let me see if they have a Windows version. I've used it on the Mac, uh, but it's a it's a wonderful tool for people who um, keep want to do a lot of research. That goes in a sidebar. Yeah, that's available for Windows, Mac, and Linux actually, which is nice. Oh, that's good because that's what I am interested in. Okay, doing. so Scrivener is a really good tool for that purpose. Like if if you're doing a lot of research, you keep your research notes available to you. It has a lot of support for reorganizing, changing the names of characters. Scrivener is extremely powerful. Um, I, I would highly recommend it. That's from literatureandlatte.com. Not as clean, although they do have a clean entry form. Um, so you can, you know, you can just type, but it has much more elaborate capabilities specifically for writing, whether it's academic papers, novels, uh, or screenplays. All of those have unique specialized formatting. Students also uh, love it. So I'm uh, I'm glad to know. So that's something that's a little different about what you're doing. You don't just want a blank page. You want to have a lot of information on the left, maybe plot outlines, maybe uh, research about locations, that kind of thing. Then Scrivener is the absolute best choice for that. And then one, one last question. Um, right now I'm on Windows 7. I can upgrade to Windows 10, but I keep hearing these horror stories and... Well, I'm okay. So the horror stories are Windows specific, not Windows Seven or versus Ten specific. <laughs> Windows is a is a hairball. It's terrible, and yeah. it's gotten worse over time. And just because it's old, and the and Microsoft, in fact, I think Microsoft's working hard on kind of starting over with this Windows X project. But in the meantime, Windows Ten is definitely to be preferred over Windows Seven because they're not updating Windows Seven. It's not secure. Mm -hmm. And it's a free update, as far as I can tell. If you've got a Windows 7 machine, just uh, upgrade to Windows. You can do it in place. Just download the Windows 10 uh, installer from Microsoft and install. And as long as you have a legit copy of Windows 7, everybody I've talked to said, yeah, you just install Windows 10 on top of it. It authenticates. It's good to go. It's a full version. At that point, if you want to do a clean install and wipe it off, you can still do that. Because once Windows 10 is installed and authorized on any given machine, it stays that way. Do you have instructions on that? Uh, yeah, we have it on the webpage. I'll put it again, but it's pretty straightforward. You don't, you're not going to have any trouble. Uh, but yeah, I'll put it on the webpage. Search for Microsoft Windows 10 ISO. It, that Microsoft calls it a media creation tool. You'll download it, and you can actually run it from the... You know, once you download it, run it from your download without burning it to a CD or a... USB key and run the install and it should just install in place without pain. You can always roll back to 7 if it doesn't work well, but it will work well. It's be Later versions of Windows are better. It's just that Microsoft can has yet to make a version of Windows that doesn't have bugs. Yeah. And yeah. that, you know, and they keep <laughs> keeps happening. <laughs> it's just very frustrating. I, you know, I I've kind of abandoned Windows for that reason, but uh 
you know, it's perfectly fine. It's just another operating system. Would you recommend some other operating system? Well, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, you could put Linux. If look, try Windows 10. If you don't like it, you can put Linux on that machine. That takes a little. That's now you're gonna. That's gonna be a great procrastination tool. <laughs> My novel won't get written because I'm installing Linux. I'd say keep, stay with what you've got. If at some point you just get frustrated with Windows, as I have. Uh, nowadays, I buy a Windows machine, use it for a little while, and then just throw up my hands and put Linux on it. Linux is a free, open source, uh, and I think very reliable operating system. That uh, is, Scrivener is available on that, too, by the way, as is Typora. But it takes a little more technical chops to keep it running, stuff like that. All right. Thanks a lot. Lee. Hey, you're very welcome. I'm glad to help it. What's, what's, is, do you have a name for your novel? Actually, yeah, I'm I'm doing kind of a reality novel based on this coronavirus thing and, and kind of a story background of um, um, how this all developed. Perfect. And, That's going to be huge. You watch, in two years, three years, we're going to see nothing but literature about this and movies and TV shows. That's all you're going to see because it's, it's <laughs> such, well, th I mean, this is a psychic earthquake for everybody yeah. in the world. And the way we Change process, the yeah, and the way we process that stuff is with fiction. Yep. So go write that. I can't wait to read it. Okay. I'll send you a copy. Thanks, Bob. Please do. Yeah. Take care. Take care. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. 8888, ask Leo. Susan Fullerton. Hello, Susan. Hello, Leo. Thank you. Thank you for calling. My subject is camera and microphone for my desktop computer. Ah. Operative word, desktop. Um, I got Zoom, which was a new word to me until a couple weeks ago. <laughs> I should, now it's everybody. It's on everybody's uh, lips. Yes. It's in the, the top of the vocabulary. Isn't <laughs> yeah. it? But to say I have about a third grade computer mentality is probably being generous. So let me tell you what happened for me. Sure. I, I was actually having therapy at a gym for my arthritic knee. Yes. And the therapist called and said, can you get Zoom? We can Isn't do this great? over the... Yeah. I said, oh, no, I thought I was... I was safe for a while. So <laughs> okay. No rats. <laughs> so I downloaded it that very day to be yes. a good student. Yes. And then I wasn't quite sure what to do with it, but I kind of figured that out. And in figuring all this out, I found out that my computer has a camera app, but no camera or microphone. We do have speakers, but no camera or microphone. So my question is, what kind to get? Now, I don't... When, since I haven't used this before, and I'm not sure how I'll use it in real life after my knee is better, uh, I don't want to spend a lot of money. And someone told me it could cost between 20 and $200. Well, I like the 20 better. <laughs> I don't blame you. Well, and to start out, if it's great and I, I use it, I can get better. But Well, as I was saying at the beginning of the show, you know, for a long time they promised us video phones and it just didn't take off because nobody wanted to do it. And now, all of a sudden, that's all anybody's doing. And in a way, I think we're going to get used to it and, and maybe even come to, to like it. So, yeah, laptops all come with microphones and cameras. So if you don't have a laptop, you're kind of, now you're, you're somewhere else. Do you have a smartphone? I don't. Okay. That's my other problem. <laughs> right. Yeah, because so. uh, smart, modern smartphones, modern laptops always have cameras and microphones suitable for video conferencing like Zoom. Right, and I may have a phone in the a better phone in the future. This is not the time to buy anything, I gather. Well, <laughs> that's not strictly true. Actually, this is an excellent time if you can get it mail order uh, because it's safe to get it mail order. And a lot of companies are kind of desperate for your business. Oh, for okay. I was afraid they wouldn't have something in. Well, okay. yes. So, And this is why I'm talking about these alternatives because... I can recommend a good uh, camera that has a built-in microphone. I love the Logitech video cameras that plug into the USB port on your uh, desktop computer. Okay. And they're Logitech. and they're you know they're really going to give you a great result. And they have built-in microphones, so they're the whole thing for you. Okay. But <laughs> but <laughs> good luck getting them because uh, they're all back ordered because you're not the first person to think of this. 
that's what I was afraid of. I thought by the time, but I'm still going to get it because I've, I've realized there's a lot of other uses than just fixing my knee. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you can uh, call family members and, exactly, yeah, yeah. and all sorts of stuff. So right. most of these cameras you could order today and you'll get them maybe in May or June. Which would be, that would be fine. Wouldn't be the end of the world? Okay. Because, I mean, I know I'm not getting it today, so I'll just do my exercises on my own. But I'm starting out thinking I wanted to start with a lower-priced one because I, I just don't know if I'm going to use it. Yeah, yeah, that or, makes sense. And I'm not, I don't have to, I might be blonde, but I'm not going to look like Taylor Swift. I'm 75 years old, you know. <laughs> my um, mom, who's 87, every time I say, let's FaceTime, because that's how we prefer to convert, converse, and it, it's really nice for visiting. Mm -hmm. She says, give me 10 minutes so I can put on my face. <laughs> and I say, Mom, I've seen your face. You don't need to put one on. <laughs> But I understand. I do understand. That's well, you know. So I'm saying I don't care how you don't care how good the camera is. Yes, I'm, I'm maybe the opposite of her. Although well, you I may not be. you kind of do because what you I mean, all right, you don't need like 4K super duper video, right. but you do want something that's not going to look like you're what well, they call it a potato. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know. So so um, Wait, you've seen me. <laughs> yeah, I would recommend a Logitech C920. If you go on Amazon, you might be able to find these or. C900 or 910. Uh, there's a variety of them. But this, the delay is going to kill you. <coughs> so the C920 maybe is too expensive. That's a really good one. You know, and the other problem is <coughs> I see people basically scalping them. Here's a used one for 229 bucks. That's ridiculous. Well, yeah. That's I'm ridiculous. Not no, and you shouldn't. That's ridiculous. So let me see if I can find a C910, which we used for years. And see what the delay is on Amazon. I ran out of time. Otherwise, we could have done this uh, on the air. That's all right. New Logitech. How much do they want for it? See, I think people are just, they're taking advantage of you right now. Yeah, 200 bucks for used is ridiculous. No. Oh. If I see something, as an example, I'm looking at a paper I printed off, but it said my, uh, it was only $17 rounded off. I said that's probably too cheap, but it says microphone for computer PC laptop. Oh, yeah, microphone will be really cheap. It's well, the camera that's going to be expensive. This is webcam with sound absorption. It was both. But it says for laptop. If it says laptop, that's not for me then. <coughs> no, it'll work for anything. Will Any, it? Okay. Yeah, if it's USB, it'll work for anything. Okay. But okay. 17 bucks is a little... More, more, too cheap. Too cheap. I thought so. Um... Uh, huh. Well, the 99 cent store didn't have them. So. See, people are really... This is like scalping at this point. Yeah. Uh, uh -huh. I, I'm appalled at the at how much people are charging for this. That's crazy. Well, that's what happens in times like this. Um, shameful. So I don't know if Logitech stopped making them. I don't know why they're in such, such short supply. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Let me just look at some other ones and see. Um, I know in looking it up, quite a few set out of stock. And I said to myself, well, that's okay because I'm I'm not going to get it for my own, for my, my therapy OMG. activity. OMG. So what's happening is people are selling their used cameras for a huge premium. They're all 200 bucks, which is, these used to be $30. Mm -hmm, Incredibly mm -hmm. annoying. Well, that's, see, that's the... That's more my price range. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you thought you were going to get a smartphone, this would be a good time to get, for instance, the new iPhone SE, which is $400, but it's but it's a whole computer. Mm -hmm. And that you could use for all of the above. I see. Okay, I see. That's the iPhone. Okay. The only drawback is the screen is a little small, but, mm -hmm. but it, at least unlike your desktop, you can put it on the floor. You know, yeah, yeah, you could yeah. put it, it, it convenient to you and move it around. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, um, so we use the C922, but how much is that, John? That's going to be ridiculous. Um, th this is our preferred uh, camera, but let me look on Amazon, and I think the scalpers are hitting this one, too. See all buying options. <laughs> yeah, 250 300 bucks. No. You people, these are all used. That's what's telling, right? People are... Yeah. Jumping on this bandwagon, saying, "Oh, finally, I can get rid of my." Yeah. <laughs> how much, John? How much did we used to pay for the for the uh, <laughs> nine twenty? I mean, they were cheap. 
All right, let me see if I can find a, another webcam that is decent, that is not so expensive. Logitech makes the best ones, but clearly um, everybody's jumping on that one. There are some... 159 All right, well, the, so the 922s were expensive. Mm -hmm. But a 720p should not be expensive. So the, that number is how many dots on it, and that is a lower quality. HD is 1080 4K is more, and so the lower the quality. Mm -hmm. All right, here's one: autofocus, full webcam, privacy shutter, fifty nine ninety nine. Got a digital microphone, Amazon Prime. It'll come May thirteenth. Oh, mm. this is, but it's an unknown brand each. But I think that's one of the reasons these are. Read the reviews, but as you shop around on Amazon, you should be able to find mm -hmm. something well less expensive. But definitely read the reviews. I will, because they're they're pretty legitimate, right? Yeah, and certainly in in aggregate they are. There may be one or two that are uh, abnormally high or low, yeah. depending on whether it came from the manufacturer or a competitor. But if you right. read twenty reviews, you'll get a very good sense. Uh, this one looks pretty good. It's from Echo, good reviews, and it's uh, it's at least it's less. It's sixty bucks, which and they, and it is Prime and available May thirteenth. Okay, and you got this all off of Amazon, right? Yep. It's from each, E-A-C-H, the autofocus. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. My pleasure. Appreciate your help. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. On the Soul Train, Soul Train show. I'm Don Cornelius. This, uh, <laughs> I am shocked. I am disappointed in, in, in you all. <laughs> no, not you. Not you, obviously. But in human beings in general... I'm looking at the cost of webcams on Amazon. First of all, the you can't get them for another month. And the scalping that's going on on Amazon, hundreds of dollars for cameras that were $50 two months ago, is ridiculous. So I found some uh, cheaper ones uh, for our caller because she wants, you know, that's great. She wants to be able to you know, uh, get her physical therapy, maybe t stay in touch with friends and family. That's the problem is everybody's going online saying, I need a camera. I need a camera now. I found one that doesn't even have a brand name. It's autofocus, full HD webcam, 1080p with privacy shutter, free tripod, pro webcam with digital microphone, USB computer camera. These should, this even this is overpriced at $60. This is some no-name Chinese camera. But, you know, even the Logitech is. They just slap their label on it. This actually looks a lot like the Logitech. It's from a company called Each, E-A-C-H. But what I suggest is before you buy anything on Amazon, read the reviews. If there are no reviews, don't buy it. If there's one very glowingly positive review, don't buy it. That's from the manufacturer. It, you, you take off the top and the bottom. You know, some of the positive re reviews will be from the maker. Some of the very negative reviews will be from competitors. But if you can get, if something has more than, say, 20 reviews, this one has 43 customer ratings, 4.1 out of 5 stars. I, and you read the reviews, it says, very nice, sturdy camera, pleasantly surprised the microphone worked. <laughs> um, this looks good. Now, this will be available May 13th, but don't wait because I'm sure now that I've mentioned it on the air, everybody's going to say, what, you can get a camera on Amazon by May 13th? What is it? But we will put a link in the show notes. <laughs> uh, where else would you go? Um, Walmart, maybe? Best Buy? You know, shop around because... Um, I feel like there is something going on. Like uh, greed, larceny... <laughs> But if you can find, it shouldn't cost more than a hundred bucks. It should probably cost. You should probably be able to get a decent camera for thirty dollars with a built-in microphone. And to be honest, even if you have a laptop, most laptops, even the Apple, you know, I have the new MacBook Air here, which is a expensive, fancy, nice laptop, still has a cruddy video camera on it. I think they say that that's because. It's to keep the laptop thin. We can't put a real good camera like we put on our iPhone. It's just not thick enough. I, it's just frustrating to me. But people, even with laptops, are, are going out and buying these. Now, if you have an, a Mac and an iPhone, 
there is software out there that will let you use your iPhone as a camera. Ecam, for instance, E C A W M, that will let you use your iPhone as a camera. That's a good choice because your iPhone is an excellent camera, right? That would be a, probably a, a pr preferable choice. <sighs> Somebody uh, mentioned, and I haven't tried this, there's a company I like a lot called Wise, W Y Z E. And they make $20 cameras, very inexpensive cameras that are quite good. And they just did a firmware update on their Wise Cam that lets you use it as a webcam. So that, that thank you, Wise, for doing that. These are normally security cameras that you'd put around the house. Uh, but if you can use it as a webcam, that's a, that is a camera with Skype or Zoom or one of your video conferencing things, that would be great. Now, I haven't tried it. This firmware update, I think, came out just a few days ago. But that might be another place to look. But that's more of an experiment. W-Y-Z-E. They do recommend you use a separate microphone, though. They have a microphone, but it's not very good. Oh, it's not, it's not in their regular firmware update. It's special firmware. We'll put links, for those of you who are more adventurous and really cheap, we'll put links in the show notes to uh, the WiseCam site. These inexpensive $20 security cameras, which I do have and I've used for a long time. And also they have a special link. We'll put that in the show notes for firmware. They'll make these cameras suitable for webcam. But, uh, but they say you still need a separate microphone, which is kind of a disadvantage. Dell is selling Logitech cameras uh, starting at $69. So that might be a place to go. Chat room's great for this. There are a lot of people in the chat room who, uh, who have done some of this research. It's tough right now. It's like buying toilet paper. <laughs> They're, it's just they're, they're scarce, or maybe better analogy, uh, disinfecting wipes. Uh, you, just, you just can't get them. And cameras, the same thing, but I guess there was a run on them. 8888-ASK-LEO, that's the phone number. Line three, Dave, Los Angeles. Hello, Dave. Hi, Ralph. How's it going? It's great. How are you, Dave? Well, I'm not in good shape. <laughs> I got hacked on my 10-year uh, Mac. I'm a long-time listener, but not a doer. Okay. So what I have is an iPad, and it's saying that it can't search or search until I verify the email. So it looks like they've changed my password. Oh. Now the keyboard to the Mac. So you can let me let me get this straight. So you can open the iPad. You can do you have a, a passcode locking it? Well, it's a Wi-Fi. No, but but when you open when you turn on your iPad, do you have to enter a code or anything to unlock it? Yeah, it won't. Well, I it says uh, to verify. Uh, when I do that, it says verify password. Okay, so you so in other words, you can't you can't log into this iPad at all. You can't use it at all. Well, I was wondering uh, on the Wi-Fi uh, if I go on Wi-Fi, would I be able? Not to? related. Okay, now I'm getting the email through my uh, smartphone. Yeah, your email will be unaffected because the the iPad is just a, an endpoint. It's not where your email is stored. So you should be able to get it from a smartphone. But you want to get into your iPad, right? Well, yeah, I'd like to get... Uh, there's no way I'm getting anything back from the Mac, right? From the Mac? Now now I'm confused. Mac, my desktop is... Uh, the password has been changed. Oh, I'm confused. So, so <laughs> the password was changed on your Mac or your iPad? On the Mac. Oh, I misunderstood. I, I thought you said email. iPad. Yeah, when I go to the Mac, I can't get on the Mac because the keyboard, I thought the keyboard was fried, but I plugged in a wired keyboard and I can't, the key, uh, the, uh, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not getting it together. <laughs> so, all right, I, um, let me, let's start over so I get it right. <laughs> so you have a Mac. You thought it was hacked. Right. Your password has been changed. Old. Yeah, 10 years old. Your right. password has been changed. Right. You're sure it's that? Well, when I tried to get on, uh, the keyboard wouldn't work. So uh, it said it would accept a, a, wired, a wired. So I plugged in a wired keyboard, and it all came up. But when I entered my password, it was changed. 
So I went to the iPad, and when I turned that on, uh, it came up, said, can't search or search until verifying password. Wow, I'm really, I have no idea what's going on, but I don't think I can help you. It sounds like it's kind of, it's kind of, I'm not laughing uh, uh, at you. I'm just, I feel bad. It sounds like it's a mess. We got to take a break. Uh, hang on, maybe I can uh, figure it out uh, off air because uh, I just I just don't know uh, I don't know what's happened here, and uh, I'm I'm not sure I can figure it out. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Unfortunately, you can't you can't go to an Apple store these days because there's no one there. That's what I would normally say is, oh yeah, you got to get an Apple Apple to help you. So well, if I've got, it was Apple that was supposed to be helping me, and they they hacked it. <laughs> How do you know it was Apple and that they hacked it? Well, uh, when I was online, I was trying to search, and all of a sudden this horrid sound came on, and it, uh, the screen uh, had a white coat said, "Contact Apple. You've been." You've got a Trojan. On okay, the, uh, that's a lie. <laughs> that's bad guys trying to get you. Did they? Did you call the number on the screen? Yes. Okay, that wasn't Apple. You know that, right? Yeah, I know that now. Yeah, when the uh, guy said, hello, what can I do for you? you got a hacking job. Let me fix yeah, it. Can you give me access to your computer? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Change. So, I so use the keyboard. Yeah, no, the whole thing is fried. So there's only one thing to do at this point. Seriously, there is only one thing to do at this point. You don't know what they put on that. No. So what you got to do is you got to turn that Mac off. I did. Okay, and then turn it on again after you wait a second, holding down the Command key and the R key. That puts it into recovery mode. And what you're going to... Command R... And what you're going to do is you're going to erase that whole darn thing. So when you get into recovery mode, you'll go to disk utility, you'll erase the hard drive. That erases everything bad that guy did. And the problem is you don't know what that guy did. So you got to erase the whole hard drive. The good news, now it's, oh, wait a minute, stop, because it's 10 years old. Yeah. The newer Macs you can install from the network. I don't know if on that Mac you can install from the network. For the iPad, I can't do anything with that Wi-Fi on the... I don't know what's iPad. going on, the, the the iPad. I have no idea. Did the guy get in your iPad, too? No, uh, he asked if I had anything else, and I said, oh, I, I got this new iPad, but it's not hooked up. He said, oh, that doesn't make any difference. So when I turned it on, I have it in progress. I had the uh, Wi-Fi set up. And I was in the process of hooking it up. So now the iPad is informing me that it can't, it needs verification on that new. Um, what I'd like to do is change the, you know, the, uh, the uh, code to get into the iPad. And I thought maybe I could use the iPad. So what I would do, what I would do at this point. Well, I don't know what I would do. Apple's going to, maybe Apple can help you. Apple did not do this to you. You understand this. It has nothing to do with Apple. This is that guy you called from the phone number you popped up on the screen. That's a hacker. So you gave a hacker access to your system. He's, God only knows what he's done to it, right? He can't change your Apple password without, well, how long was he in there? All night. So he was probably in there 12. Uh, yeah, maybe he did change your Apple password. Yeah, this might warrant a call to Apple. Uh, I can't help you. I really can't help you at this point. Uh, I am so sorry that happened. Um, there's just no way I can I can fix this remotely. Maybe Apple can. They're going to want to reset your Apple account. They're going to need to do that. And then they're going to need to, and they can tell you if you can reinstall the operating system on this uh, old Mac. Because that's what you're going to need to do. I'm so sorry. Did he? I hope you didn't give him any money. That would be even. That would add insult to injury. He was on it all night. All night. God know. God only knows what he did. You might want to change your credit card numbers and 
Oh, man. Da, 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 da. How do you do the hustle, Dick D. Bartolo? It's a special Pretty, dance. Yeah, 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 Is that good. it? Yeah, perfect. <laughs> and you shake your hips. <laughs> Leo Laporte, the tech guy. It's disco time. Disco with Dick D. Bartolo, Mad's Maddest writer. And our Gizmo Wizard saw a great article about you in PC, on PC Magazine at PCMag.com this week. John Kalish, our friend, wrote a nice profile of you. Yeah, and, and thank you for uh, adding to it. That was very I said, kind of you. I said something like, Dick's not at all a bad fellow once you get to know him. You know, something like that. Something yeah, like that. <laughs> no. I said it is always an honor to be working with Mad's Maddest writer. He got one thing wrong, though. He said you gave yourself that name. Oh, no, no. That was Mad Magazine gave you that name. Oh, Ma uh, Bill. Yeah, Bill. Bill Gaines gave you that name. Uh, Dick D. Bartolo, besides being a legend for more than five decades on Mad Magazine. Wow. Uh, what am I doing on this show? Yeah. Okay, when he, he that was, I ask myself that every week. <laughs> he is also our gizmo wizard. We call him our gizwiz. And he brings us fun gadgets from his quarantined lair in Gizneyland. How are things in Gizneyland these days? Things, th things are good. Now, you know what? Now, you, being a gourmet, you, you're not going to know about Three to one mug cakes, are you? <laughs> um, I might. Is this something you put in a mug and then in the microwave and then you get cake? Yeah. Yeah, I know about oh, that. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Okay. So I'm thinking it, it, it's great fun because, you know, you don't go out much and you can bake a cake every night. And then I'm on Amazon and I'm thinking. Oh, see, I just have a recipe for that. I didn't know you could buy them. Well, no, this is what happened. I, I was on Amazon and I find out that Duncan Hines is making mug cake pre-boxed. The advantage of the <laughs> It's a mug cake in a box. In a box, but it comes with icing. Oh, that's something most mug cakes do not come with. No, exactly, exactly. And mine, it only came uh, today, so I didn't have a chance to make it. I bought... Uh, carrot cake mug cakes. They're coming Monday. Brownies in a mug. I Ooh, ordered brownies lemon, in a mug. Lemon mug cake with lemon frosting. <laughs> okay, Dick. Dick I would, maybe you want to slow down on the mug cakes. <laughs> That's a lot of mug cakes for one guy. Oh, well, no, one I guy. just one a, one a day. Just one a day. Uh, no, it, it, I think kids would have fun doing it. And also, seriously, if you can't run up to the store, even to get Twinkies or whatever, this is a real it's true. inexpensive way. Many to of us are going through Hostess dessert product yes. withdrawal at this point. Yeah. And the bad thing is when you have withdrawal because you ran out of Hostess cupcakes. You go, now what do I do? And then Myra said, take two boxes of cake mix, mix them together, add water, and every night you can bake yourself oh, a little single serve that's a good idea. mug cake. I mean, I my recipe is, you know, from scratch. Oh, but, yeah. Your, your recipe is five pounds of butter. No, 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 no. It's very easy. In fact, uh, it's an egg and some almond flour. Oh, my you God. Just... Already you rent with an <laughs> egg. <laughs> Who has eggs? No one has eggs. All right. You're right. You got a good point. Duncan Hines mug cake mix. Mix. Yeah. And yeah. it was cheap. I mean, uh, it was $2.50 and it has four packs in it and a bag of icing. I actually have to say so, I'm looking at all these online Mud, mud, mug cake recipes from the country cook and the food.com and the Monday, but and they're all using cake mix. Yes. So I didn't realize. I thought I thought you had to make it from scratch. I was making. Oh, no, I no. was making them. You know, healthy mug mug cakes. <laughs> oh, who wants that? This is a pa it's a pandemic. Any we don't anything want no goes cooking. now, baby. Yes, exactly. Hmm. All right, so Duncan Hines, that's your your gadget. Yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> and I also just wanted to mention, you always mention my website. Yes. So I decided that from April 15th to June 15th, yes. every mad thing I sell uh, is going directly to the Actors Fund. Oh, Dick. Because, what about the you know, Dick D. Bartolo Fund? <laughs> well, you know, I feel so bad because now they're saying no Broadway show. No. 
can open before June 7. It's breaking my but heart. But seven shows have already announced they're not going to come back. I know. It's so devastating. all of these people out, out of work. work. Out of work. Holy cow. Well, that's very thoughtful of you, I have to say. Um, gizwiz.biz. If you go there, there's lots of stuff to see. It's really, really wonderful. And if you want to see where to get mug cake mix. <laughs> so Duncan Hines sells this as mug cake mix? No. Yes. They it do. It takes a minute and 20 seconds to make a mug cake. Nice. And that's uh, that's on his website. Just click the button that says the Gizwiz visit the tech guy. But you'll also see the gadgets he shows on ABC's World News Now. You'll also see the fabulous What the Heck Is It contest, a close-up picture of some sort of gizmo or gadget. You have a couple more weeks to identify it. Rightly or wrongly, you're in the drawing for uh, autographed copies of Mad Magazine. But this is what Dick's talking about. The Mad Collectibles, the Gizwiz garb edge. Uh, that's how he says it, and uh, and more. And he says uh, proceeds from sales here, which normally go to keep Dick and Gadgets, yes, exactly, uh, are going to the uh, the Actors Fund, which is is really nice of you, I think. And there's so oh, much fun well, stuff, and this is great. And you, you sanitize it before you mail it. I do. You I bake do. it in a 158 degree <laughs> yes, oven yes, with exactly. a mug cake. And exactly. uh, and it's safe, and there's so much stuff there. D one of the things I love is uh, is by the way, here's a picture of Dick. Uh, no weeks on the New York Times bestseller list. Well, Dick, that's a shame. Why are you sitting in the fountain there? Oh, uh, you know, it's down in Atlanta uh, do, on on a book tour, and and the guy <laughs> said, you know, we're so tired of doing author portraits. Can you do something different? And I said, yeah. <laughs> That's I picked so up funny. my chair and I walked yeah, and I sat I can in the definitely, fountain. You asked Dick DiBartolo to do something different, you're going to get it. But do get a copy of this. This is his memoir, Good Days in Mad, a historical, sorry, hysterical tour behind the scenes at Mad Magazine. And that is, I have uh, several copies of that. It's really, it's well worth it. There you are with Morley Safer as he's doing his 60 Minutes piece on Mad. There's Bill Gaines. You're at, uh, where are you traveling in that picture? Good God, that was when Bill rented a railroad car for oh, us. Oh, man. Oh, man. Bill said, I have a surprise for you. And he said, Dick, you especially are going to be bowled oh, over. Man. So, folks, yeah. especially now that uh, Mort has, has passed, there's probably a lot of Mort Drucker stuff on there as well. Yeah, there 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 is. Yeah, this is a great time to go to gizwiz.biz. And as they mentioned on PC Magazine, you have an excellent weekly show you do yourself called the Gizwiz Podcast at gizwiz.tv. Now's the time to take a, take a break, make a mug cake, and enjoy, <laughs> enjoy Dick Buy and, a book, and sit down Buy and a read. Book, sit, read. <laughs> now, reading's too much work. Eat a mug cake instead. That's true. <laughs> thank, thank you, Dickie D. Okay, buddy. All I'll right, see you next week. Stay safe. Okay. You're not going you out, too. are you? Are you staying inside no. all the time? We're, I am so tired of inside. I bet. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. It's a little after a while. It's like get me out of here. Yeah. All right. Well, take, okay. See you next take week. Care. Thank you, Dickie D. Thank you. Uh, thank you all for being here. Thanks to Lady Laura, our musical director. She is a wonder at spinning the discs, picking excellent music for us. Thanks to Kim Schaffer, our phone angel. She's answering the phones, taking your calls, and thanks all of you for being here. We uh, we couldn't do it without you. We appreciate your your patronage. I hope you all are doing well. I'm so glad you're here. Remember, our website has everything we talked about, including audio and video from the show. TechGuyLabs.com. You can add your comments there. No sign up. It's free. TechGuyLabs.com. And I'll see you next time. Leo Laporte, the Tech Guy. Have a great Geek Week. Well, that's it for the Tech Guy show for today. Thank you so much for being here. And don't forget, TWIT, T-W-I-T. It stands for This Week in Tech, and you'll find it at twit.tv, including the podcasts for this show. We talk about Windows on Windows Weekly, Macintosh on Mac Break Weekly, iPads, iPhones, Apple Watches on iOS Today, Security and Security Now. I mean, I can go on and on and on. And, of course, the big show every Sunday afternoon, This Week in Tech. You'll find it all at twit.tv. And I'll be back next week with another great Tech Guys show. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you next time.